and then uh, we'll start to call in uh, the photo contest winners this morning. So the County of Stellar has each year a contest uh, for photos, and uh, those photos end up forming, uh, sorry, I'll unmute us on Zoom so that those on Zoom can hear us. Son, you don't have to turn anything on or off, but just speak to um, so we do have the uh, the photo contest winners uh, out in the lobby. Every year we have a photo contest uh, with the County of Stettler and those photos form our calendar for the for the upcoming year. Um, and in house, it's Nikki Thorsonson who runs this uh, runs this project. Did you want to call on them? Uh, hi, and um, so we're really excited this year to welcome our photo contest finalists into council and uh, present them with their prizes. We've got some Stetler bucks for them today, and we also will announce our grand prize winner. So, uh, Glenn Munden, if Glenn can come in. Glenn submitted a few photos this year. They were all very beautiful. Our, um, our judges had a horrible time trying to get it down. So he's featured on the front cover of our calendar. And this photo he took in Ward 4, Councillor Nyberg's ward. He's pretty proud of that. But the grand prize photo this year was taken in... Ward number six. Number six, Erskine Buffalo Lake. One more flip. Um, One more flip. Erskine Buffalo Lake, and uh, his pheasant photo is beautiful. So, Glenn, you're welcome to uh, remove your mask while you're at the mic, if you like, and your prize, which is an iPad mini, and your photos are there, along with uh, an envelope for your front cover photo, too. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to thank Council uh, for this gift. I really appreciate it. Uh, photography has been a, a passion of mine since I was a, a younger fella, and in my teen years and uh, yeah, I went, actually one of the first things that I bought that I can remember when I had a, a part-time job was a, a good camera so uh, it's something that's always been of an, an interest to me and uh, over the years I've tried to keep up with photography and getting a little bit more into it towards uh, the last few years so uh, I had mentioned earlier that some of the photos that I've taken, uh, the ones that I've taken this year that are in the calendar were part of a, a project I was doing with my daughter uh, this year where we tried to take a, a picture a day during COVID uh, just to get familiar with our cameras and see what kind of pictures we could do and experiment and stuff like that. So uh, that's where these pictures came from as part of that project. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn, and congratulations. We hope you'll take part in our next contest. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, okay, second up, we have our February photo, which is Henry Van Omeren from... Uh, now, the photo was taken in Ward 2, but maybe Henry can tell us where he's from. Thanks. Hi, Henry. Yes. Um, photo is taken on the Erskine pavement, just uh, south of Erskine. And just the right day. And that's it. Are you a photographer normally? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> just a farmer. Uh, so this would be a Big, Big Valley Ward. And uh, Councillor Grover is with us online I believe so I'm sure he's cheering loudly although maybe Councillor Nyberg's cheering just as loud because he does have a fondness for this subject matter in your photo. Gotta have the sheep, gotta. Uh, so your prize is um, there. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us and uh, for braving those icy roads this morning. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Our our next photo in the calendar is March, and it was taken by Geraldine Fleming, who couldn't join us this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful photo taken in Ward 1. A Les Stolberg, is, Councillor Stolberg is very happy about that, of the cro crocus. And uh, we're very thrilled Geraldine can contribute this year. And then our... April photo, Haley Ray also couldn't make it this morning, um, but 
This photo was taken in Ward 3, Martha Gatsby, the Buffalo. She has two photos in the calendar this year, Haley Ray does. And then we have Chanel Schultz from um, Ward 7. She says she's up by Donelda. Welcome, Chanel. So this is the first time I've seen a photo from Chanel make it into our photo contest. And we just really want to thank you for participating. It's fantastic. You had several fantastic photos. We had 286 submissions this year. And uh, probably about 20 judges came through and judged our photo contest. So uh, we just really, really want to congratulate you to making it into this year's calendar because it uh, was a tough crowd, I think. Very much. Thanks. And have you been taking photos for a long time, Chanel? No, did not really. No. Just a hobby. Yeah. Good. Well, your your prize is to the right there. I think you can find your photo. I think you may have an eye for photography, though. That's a very nice picture. Thank you very much. And this is Ward Seven, and this is Councillor Paul McKay's ward, Danelda Red Willow. You have what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember where you took it, Chanel? Uh, it is in one of our fields that we farm. Lovely. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Our June photo is a thunderstorm, again taken by Haley Ray. Uh, however, this was taken in Ward 4. Um, Here's again, Councillor Nyberg. You have some good storms. Not the councillor, but definitely. <laughs> That's, so our next photo is July, and um, I'm not going to try and say her first name. She told me to call her Daisy. So Daisy McCrindle, if you can come on in. And uh, Daisy told me about this photo, so I'm just going to let her talk. If you want to just pull the mic down a little bit so it's closer. There you go. Good morning, and thank you for picking my picture. And I'm so glad to be part of this county. I just came like two years ago when just the first COVID strike. So I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. And you're in which ward do you live? By more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're telling me why you took this photo. So uh, council would probably be interested to hear your story. Yeah, actually, I uh, I've been taking picture to send to my family just to see what's here in Canada, and they never see canola before. Like we know, like oh, this yellow field from TV or magazine. So now we know it's canola, <laughs> and that's my husband crops. Get it? So. Be proud of it, and we're proud of our Canada canola. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think our council's pretty <laughs> proud of our canola as well, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, good job. That's a beautiful photo. Thank you. And we're um, we're really happy you have a hobby at photography, and we hope you'll come back again with some more photos next year. Yes, and your gift is just to the right there, if you can find it there. Thank you. Uh, Brenda Meyer, Brenda, we know well, she's been through this uh, photo contest prize winning uh, category several times. Brenda was un unable to join us this morning. So uh, Brenda's going to catch up with us and collect up some calendars to share with her family and her uh, Stetler Bucks as well. And her photo was taken in Ward 2, so Councillor um, Grover, again, in Big Valley. And now we have September, who uh, this photo is taken by Rob Brennan in Ward 6. Welcome, Rob. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to be here. A little icy getting in, but uh, apart from that, it was a great drive coming in. I uh, took this picture out by Buffalo Lake. I spent lots of time standing in the bush and along the shoreline, and this happened to be one of the almost close to the shoreline birds. So uh, I submitted some other photos too, which is great. It's a great hobby for me. I'm retired. I recently moved here about a year ago, although I grew up in the area. Um, I did want to actually say, um, being a, a new resident, if you will, ish to the county, uh, I think County of Stetler is actually a 
great place to be. I had I lived in County of Sturgeon before that, and I had nothing but grief with some of the stuff that we were dealing with there. Gravel roads were awful where I lived, <clears throat> and I think the gravel roads here are great. And sometimes you don't really know how good things are until you come from somewhere else or visit somewhere else. So anyway, hats off to you guys. You're doing a good job. Always things to improve on, but that's okay. That's the way it goes. So I, I didn't want to say that, but thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Do we have another iPad we could give them? <laughs> uh, Rob, do you are you a bird watcher by is that what you're I landscape birds, any wildlife. Oh, okay, cool. That's a very cool picture. I'll, uh, you'll see more of my stuff in future years, I think. So I really enjoy doing that. So. I'm going to try and share um, all the photos that were submitted through our, our website this year. I'm going to try to figure out a way or Facebook um, because there were spectacular photos that didn't make it in, you know, simply because there's 286 of them. But um, in my mind, there's a bluebird photo that also should have been in the calendar, but, you know, you just don't. And I did notice a theme that uh, Ward 6, so Ers Erskine Buffalo Lake, but for probably particularly Buffalo Lake, there was a lot of uh, bird photos taken there. And then, of course, um, Big Valley, I noticed the big game pictures coming out of Big Valley and Denelda. So there's definite themes which I learned about from this uh, photo contest where we divided the wards up this year. So that was fun. Thanks again, Rob, for contributing. We hope we see you again. We definitely hope you see you again. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> to be here. Thanks. Welcome back home. <laughs> yes, Next photo is October, and it was taken by Sienna's wife. And Sienna just contacted me this morning to say the roads weren't going to allow her to make this drive in today, which we all can understand. Um, Sienna took a beautiful nighttime photo of harvest, and uh, we're pretty thrilled with it. Um, this is, I think this speaks to all of our agriculture industry when you're working late at night, but you see some scenes that the rest of the world doesn't get to see, so we're excited to share them in this year's calendar. Tammy Laybourne. Uh, she actually has a connection here. Steve, Steve Grabos in our parts department um, is her, I guess she'd be the better half. I think that's how it works. Uh, Tammy took this in Ward 3, and uh, this is right in her backyard, she told me. So this is a beautiful photo, and uh, I called it a sunset, and she corrected me and told me it was a sunrise, and I said, well, how would I know that? I've never seen one. So it's really great that we could share a sunrise. And next up, we have Tana Nixon. Uh, we know the Nixon last name because Councillor Nixon has just retired and left us, and I believe she's a relative. Um, Tana's photo is our December photo, and it was taken in the best ward in the county, Ward 5. <laughs> Ernie Gender. <laughs> I needed support from a fellow resident there. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Council, for having this um, contest again. Thank you to the judges. This is the second time I've been in the calendar, so that's super exciting. Um, and this picture was exciting to me because those are actually friends from Red Deer. It's my best friend from Red Deer and her husband and son who had come out to enjoy um, a day of snowshoeing, and it was just taken in the quarter just behind our house. And it was also kind of it's exciting to me because snowshoeing is new uh, to myself. I've never had really a basketball. It was always my winter activity. And so I never had an outdoor winter activity that I loved until COVID came along. And I had to find something new to get me outside and make me want to get outside. And then I discovered snowshoeing and that the, the uh, quarter around our place um, was a really good place to do it. So I'm very pleased that this is one of the photos that was chosen. Um, and in, it was just taken with my iPhone. And I find that our county is so incredibly beautiful that it is not hard to take good photos or beautiful pictures in this county. 
Oh, we couldn't agree more. Thank you, Tana, and congratulations. And thank you for contributing every year to our photo contest because uh, we love to see your perspective. And that sky is brilliant, in my opinion. And hope to see you next year again with another Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, one honorable mention. This was one that was uh, tied and then just didn't make the cut at the very end, but Nicole Verhoeven. Welcome, Nicole. Nicole is, took this photo in Ward 4, but I'm not sure if you live in Ward 4. Yeah, okay. Ross Lake Road. Yeah, so you can tell us a little bit about your photo. Well, not a whole lot. I just seen the beautiful sky and went outside and shot the picture and luckily the horses were right at the right spot. The sky is beautiful again and um, thank goodness for iPhones, right? Yes. In your pocket. Yes. Yes. Well, can I my picture? Thank you and we hope you'll contribute again. You had a few photos in. I remember them all. They were lovely. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. And if you want to grab yours is up here on the counter, just just on the right right up there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we do have one more photo in our honorable mention category. It was taken in Ward 7, Danelda Red Willow, and it was taken by Kami Ritz, who works at the Stetler Board of Trade. And I'm guessing she was busy this morning, couldn't make it over. Um, so congratulations. Congratulations to Kami, and we'll make sure she gets her prize delivered over there. And that concludes our 2021 photo contest, but we would like the public to know that we have 2022 calendars featuring all these photos available at the counter at the County Administration Building. So pop in any time, 8.30 to 4.30, and, and pick up your copy and share them with your friends and family that maybe are no longer in the area, because I'm sure they'd love to see it. Yeah. Nikki, I'd just like to say thank you for doing this. This is a phenomenal addition to the County of Stetler. This is the stuff that um, really makes us shine. And I, I mean, soft spot for this uh, this contest. Uh, remember when I got on council, we had the, we were using photo stock at one time and I, we have such a beautiful place to live um, that we need to show it off. And this is a great opportunity. So if you're out there listening, come in and get your calendar because it's, it is a, a work of art. So. And I was just going to add that lots of times, a lot of the photos that don't actually make the calendar are still used in county uh, brochures and, and information and stuff like that we send out. If it's fitting for the spot, a lot of these other features will they'll be seen for sure. Yeah, we have them all featured in our next magazine, which will come out over Christmas as well. So you can have a look in there too. <coughs> That's in the county connection. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a wonderful job. Every year it is. So. With 296, you can almost do a photo a day on Facebook. And maybe that's how I should share them, because I really think they all should be looked at. Yeah. That could be a photo a day. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all the effort that you put into it. It is greatly appreciated. You guys had the hard job judging, because uh, I, I tell you, I wouldn't have wanted that job. There's too many good ones. We just pass it on to the next one that come in line. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Andrew, we're just going to stay. Are you pausing us now, or what are we? Um, no, I, unless you guys need a break, we, you can call the meeting to order, and we can resume with our regular spot. Stop search. We'll just do a quick recess then.
We will now call our December 8th, 2021 uh, council meeting to order at uh, 1033 after going through the beautiful submissions that made up our 2022 calendar. If you didn't have a chance to see it, watch the website or stop at the county and pick up the calendar. Okay, we have uh, our agenda and along with additions, which in our hand copy are in green. And there was one other addition that was brought forward for in camera was uh, a uh, personnel update. Yep. And so then 13.1. And then the other uh, deletion, uh, Mr. Chairman, the public hearing at one o'clock uh, was that we had a glitch in the advertising. Uh, so we're going to need to postpone that to January. Well, that along with the uh, yeah, that at the uh, bylaws. When we come to that bylaw, we'll just set the new date at that point. We'll get a motion for that. I'll make sure. So that would be 10.1. We need a motion for it. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other additions? Councilor Silver? I will move the agenda with the additions. Okay. Any questions? And deletions. Additions and deletions. That's amended. It's fine. Uh, any other questions? All in favor? You there, Councilor Grover? He's got himself muted right now. Can star six to unmute Councillor Grover. In favor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, minute approval of our November 10th, 2021 regular council meetings, which were distributed. Councillor Niver. I went through them, they look good. I'll give you a motion to approve. Any questions or concerns? All in favor? In favor. Carried. Okay, our first delegation arrives, arrives at 1145, which is uh, Staff Staff Sergeant Bruce Holliday. And from that, we'll move on to new business. Requests for decision, uh, interim budget, page five of our package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Krista, would you like to speak to this? So, so a requirement is that we have to have an operating budget in place before uh, at the start of every year. With that being said, we are not at a position to pass the 2022 budget. So what I'm looking for is to take the 2021 budget and pass it as the interim operating budget for the County of Stetler. I'll make that motion, Larry. Okay, thank you, Councilor Grover. Thank you, Krista. Any questions, concerns? All in favor? Favor. Carried. 7.2, request for decision. Cost of living adjustment, page seven of the package. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. This is something that the uh, council does every year, but uh, Krista, you put this RFD together. Would you like to speak to it? I sure can. Uh, so what I'm proposing is we've looked back at, uh, and we've been watching that, the Statistics Canada website to look for what the cost of living has been um, over the course of time. We've gone out to surrounding municipalities that actually had their cost of living already passed. And so we're proposing that uh, effective January 1st, 2022, we have a cost of living increase to all staff of 3%. Um, I went back to look for the past five years. Last year we passed to 0% and in the previous years it was from 1.3 to 2% in the previous four years to that. So we've had some type of cost of living increase. The cost of living being 4.3 um, from October of last year to October of this year is what Alberta is seeing as the cost of living according to the sources we've looked at. Thank you, Krista. Councilor Stuber. I would like to move that the County of Stetler uh, increase the, the cost of living for our staff effective January 1st to at a rate of 3%. And that is considering that they did not get anything last year. So uh, this year, I will move that. Questions, concerns? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I'm just wondering if, if the cost of living is 4.3 and we're going at 3%, is this... And I know we're in the middle of a ugly budget, a very ugly budget, but I understand too that um, if the cost of living is the cost of living, this isn't COLA, this is less than COLA. So where, where are we at on that? 
should we be closer at three and a half? I, and I know this hurts our budget and I, I know that that's something out there. And I, and we have some general information here. Um, what did Lacombe give their employees last year? Do we know? They did get a cost of living increase last year. I'm not hundred percent sure what it was, but it's totally up to council. I mean, COLA can change. We, I think energy prices and, um, you know, the, the the supply chain is what's driving um, the cost of living up as high as it is right now. This is higher than it's been in almost a decade, I think. Um, Council, our staff didn't get anything last year, so they would be, uh, I would assume, probably fairly happy with with anything. Um, and you, you want to be within the range, within the region, because if there's too much disparity, then it's not good for the community as a whole. And I, and I totally get that and I, I understand that and I just know some of the union negotiations that I've been in have always seen some increase and having zero last year was was maybe a little tough um, going forward. I know the cost of living was down last year, uh, but I'm just wondering if we shouldn't be bumping it up a little bit more. That's just my comment to, to have the, the discussion among council anyways. Um, I appreciate what uh, Councillor Nyberg is saying. Uh, I sympathize with staff whenever you're looking at a not keeping up with inflation. But at the same point, I think we need to put this into perspective. We have a ton of tough decisions to make. Is this going to make even tougher decisions on services and taxes next month? Uh, everyone, it, it seems kind of cliche, but uh, a lot of people took a hit with COVID. We had an agricultural disaster, and I don't, I don't want to seem out of touch with our residents. So, it, if if you're suggesting that we need to go to the 4.3 percent, I I don't think I could support that. And the the living index in Alberta, yeah, we're taking an average. I, I'm not doubting the accuracy of that number, but sometimes these numbers get skewed by uh, our large cities that seem to be uh, see the higher highs on inflation and the lower lows. So I'm not sure if it's if if we want to target that, it, it might be a skew. Also, Silver, I'd like to speak to it as well, and I agree with some of the comments from Councillor Stevens that um, uh, in the city, I know for people working in downtown. Calgary Edmonton that what they pay for parking a month would be uh, uh, blow most people's minds out here so um, I mean it is an average and some of our surrounding uh, municipalities are offering less and and, um, and the way I look at it too if pe the minimum wage earners or people that just slightly above minimum wage they feel uh, cost of living far greater than people that aren't at that wage so I, I'm thinking uh, three percent is fair and further that too, our agriculture community took a, a decrease in pay this year quite substantially. So I think with that in mind, uh, I, I still support my own motion at 3% is fair. Councilor Brewer, do you have any comments? I'll support the 3%. You do hear me? You said you do support? Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I've got a comment on it because I, I have to agree with what Councillor Stevens said also too, because we do have tough decisions to make. And if we go too high, and even even I question the 3%, because in a month we could be looking at staff counts and saying the only place we can save money in our budget is by cutting staff. So that's that's a tough decision this time of year. It happens not just in municipalities, it happens in business. So I think the three percent is, is, in my opinion, very generous for for what our what our producers have went through this year. And that was only my only comment. No, and that's and that's that's that's, that's very fair discussion because sometimes what we end up doing is we just make a motion, pass a motion, and then nobody knows what council's thinking. I know, and that, that's a very fair statement, Council Member. That's uh, yeah. any Council Gender. I also find with what the preliminary budget that we were presented over the last couple of days, it was a quite an eye shocker, much more drastic than what had been like the previous year. So, like I just find that the three percent is also very generous. And if I can, I think our goal as as council is to keep staff 
Yes, yeah. absolutely. But I mean, it. I mean, we, we could go with a higher raise, but then it may end up exactly like you said, end up losing staff. So I think our goal is to keep staff or even maybe if we can add some key components to what we have. So I, and I'm fair with that. I just wanted to have this discussion. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? In favor. Opposed? You're, you're, uh, Councilor Stevens is opposed. Seven point three request for decision bad debts uncollectible accounts. Page eight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is another housekeeping thing we do at the end of every year. So, Krista, would you like to go through? So, this here is a receivable that we had on our books since I'm just looking at it, um, February of 2020. Uh, this was for a cattle scale rental that uh, we couldn't move to taxes or any other options for collections. I do want to just give a note on past collections. Um, in past years, we've had to do write-offs. Um, with uh, changing uh, some stuff, we actually did manage to collect on it. So we do still try to collect. Uh, when we wrote off in 2019, we just collected last month. So we do need to look at this. So that is what it is. Mr. Chairman, I'll give you the motion to staff recommendation to write off the bad debt. Questions, concerns, gender. So this was a scale that the county owns and it was rented out? Correct. Does a person live in within the county? That's my understanding. Um, I'm not sure if they still do or not. Uh, but yeah, they we have been unsuccessful in accessing it. I have advised um, the Agricultural Services Department as well uh, to no longer rent the any products to the individual. That, should it almost be paid a deposit beforehand? So um, that was part of the, there was no deposit in the, or that there was a deposit, but we refund the deposit um, when they return the, the item. So there's not a chance to collect it. Now a lot of our stuff isn't having rental fees or uh, a charge for use. So we're not seeing as many issues with this, but it's one that got away on us. This is going to be an eye opener for future. Everyone else is going to be paying the consequences then. I think we're letting the cattle scale out now for zero, but a, a, a deposit. So, I mean, it's like maybe they had some hard times. Maybe they were doing it for a club and, and didn't feel that they should pick. I don't know the details behind it, but right now I'm pretty sure we're not charging a rental fee. We're just charging a deposit to make sure it comes back. And if it requires some, uh, repairs so that we have the money to do it. We do have a late charge on it now, so that's the only thing that applies. So $100 deposit and then $100 a day late charge after the second day when it's supposed to be back. Um, just to encourage people to uh, bring it back so it's usable by everybody. But if, if I got a, I've got a question, if this person was a rate payer, why would this just not go on to their? Things under the MTA that you can put on a tax roll. If they owe us money, if the restaurant thing comes down, you can. Utilities you can, taxes you can, uh, work work that you do on their property on their behalf because they didn't do it, spraying things like that you can charge, but you can't charge this. Because yeah. it's scale, the, the charge always has to be related to the land for the most part, and a cattle kind of scale is specifically related to the land. It may never gone on to the taxpayer's land, and especially if it was used for a club or used elsewhere. Right? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. The only alternative we have is the red flag and a blacklist. Cut them off from the service. I mean, that gets their attention in a very big hurry. And that's just what we did with the individual that from 2019, we cut them off from the service um, with the changes at one of our water truck fill stations. They required uh, use of it and they said, we need an account. And we said, you needed to pay your account before we would reinstate it. We got the collection. Same with Stellar Waste, if they don't uh, pay their bill, we cut off the service. We easily get their attention in a very short period of time. It's the only one that we have absolutely no control over is that one. Councilor Grover, do you have any? Yeah, I do. I think it's a great idea to put them on a blacklist, uh, you know, and uh, they get no more services from the county. Uh, everybody knows they have to pay for that stuff. We put that scale down to zero because it's the ratepayers of the county center. 
on it, and they are going to pay for the repairs on it too. And at the end of the day, it benefits the cattle industry and uh, and the 4-H. And uh, I think it's a great idea to do it that way, uh, but it should not come back wrecked. If it does, that's why you take the deposit. But this person that just seems to live in the county, you know, don't 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 put everybody in the county in the same. Uh, there's maybe one or one or two rotten apples in the barrel, but the rest of them are pretty good. Thank you, Councilor Grover, Councilor Stevens. All right, quick clarification: When you said we cut this particular person off of services, did we cut them off just rental, spraying, mulching, the whole gamut? Yes. Okay. Everything. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? We have a motion on the table for Councilor Niebuhr. All in favor? In favor. Carried. Okay, 7.4 decision uh, request for decision forgiveness of tax penalty for customer PRE007, page 9 of the package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have four of these right in a row, so I'll let Sharon speak to them. Okay. Good morning. Um, as Yvette said, we do have four requests for forgiveness of penalty. The first one in place, um, the individual, um, unfortunately, was called out of town the day the taxes were due um, and is asking the council um, look at forgiving the penalty. Um, through our bylaw, um, it's as of November 1st, it's a 10% that goes on to the um, rate pair that's applied to just the current taxes. Um, the taxes normally go or went out this year in June, um, so they had up to October uh, 29th to um, look after their taxes. It's been advertised in the connections, the newspaper, Facebook, um, on our website, our tax deadline. And under Section 347 of the Municipal Government Act um, allows council um, to defer taxes, uh, do a reduction, cancellation of taxes, uh, gives the authority, uh, providing it is equitable to all um, rate payers. In this particular instance, we're recommending that the County of Stettler forgive the November 1st, 2021, penalty in the amount of 512.87, um, and for the customer PRE007. Um, the other option that they have, they can look at forgiving a portion of the penalty, or they can deny um, the request um, that has been brought forward. I'd like to talk, Larry. Yes, go ahead, Councilor. Uh, yeah, I know uh, our county collects taxes, which I really appreciate, is the end of October. They've got the whole year. A lot of them are in June and, and first thing in the spring, they collect the taxes then. Uh, but we're a rural farming, rural area, uh, you know, uh, and I think we're uh, up and beyond the call of duty to leave it till the end of October. Everybody knows the taxes come due now, so I'd make the motion for option number three. Okay, questions, concerns? Councilor Gender? It's like, uh, I, I realize that the due date was the 29th, but like it's been kind of a long standing that the end of October has been, um, has been kind of the cutoff. And it's very difficult to say like whether, whether it be in say like the last, uh, the last two days they end up on a Saturday or Sunday. I find this is some policy that we're going to have to look at in time to come. Say, if it does end up on there, it should be the, the, the first working day after that. That's a complete change in policy, though, Councillor Gender. So it's the last working day of the month, is how it's been worded. Councillor Stevens? Uh, we, we advertise it every way we know how uh, social media, our, our, our local media, notice of assessments. Um, our Stetler connections, our, our social media, we for something that happens every year. And when I read this, we can choose to forgive it if we consider it equitable. We have already had a, a ton of people that have paid this penalty. 
I don't see how we can vote to forgive this and it be equitable to everyone. Thank you. Councilor Schubert. And again, and on the tax notice, it clearly said that the payment was due October 29th. It clearly states that late payments will face a 10% penalty and they they had it for four or five months. I cannot understand where anywhere where anyone would think it has to be paid on the last day. It can be paid at any time in that four or five months. And and set you're setting yourself up for a a disappointment if you wait to the last day and something comes up in your life or something changes or you, or you forget. So basically it is best policy to, to pay it sooner. And uh, I agree it uh, these things there's been a lot of people that forgot and paid the penalty and then we have a few that are asking for forgiveness and we can't forgive some and not others so basically I can't support forgiving any of these uh, taxes that are just because they forgot to pay. Any other questions? Or Mr. Chairman yeah. just the other thing too we also have um, multiple different ways of paying right you can it's it's not like you have to write a check you could go on to a monthly um, EFT you can do uh, an EFT through your bank to pay us um, and then you can go mail the check in um, the week before and have it dated so I'm sure that it um, if you don't have to personally deliver it I know Mail service, it may be a little slow, but if it is, we we still consider that to be paid if we get it. It's the postmark that counts. So so if this individual would have um, took, taken that check, thrown a stamp on it in an envelope, and thrown it somewhere in any mailbox in his or her way, um, it would have been taken care of. You did not have to just drive into the county and stuff. Could have went onto their computer. You can pay it from your iPhone. We have made it very easy to pay your bills, so I'm a little, I'm a little hard to understand how it. I know what happens. Sometimes you forget your wife's birthday, but we try not to do those real important things. So we, we have a motion on the table <laughs> right right now for motion uh, for option three, the county staller number six, council advisory per the request is denied. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? In favor. Opposed? Councilor Grover or Councilor Gender opposed. Okay. okay uh, request for decision 7.5 forgiveness of tax penalty for customer NIE 005, page 12 in the package. That would be yeah, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll let Sharon speak to this one too. Again, uh, the repair is asking council con to consider forgiveness on the November penalty of 10357. Um, so the recommendations um, are that the county of Stetler cancel the November 1st, 2021 penalty in the amount of 10357 for role for should be customer number NIE005. Uh, the council forgive a portion of the penalty or to request advise the repair the request is denied. Councilor Stevens. I'll make a motion for option three. Okay. Questions, concerns? Council Gender? This particular one here, they are four days late, it will not pass with me. Any other questions or comments? Um, if there wasn't a substantial penalty for late payments, no one would make an effort to pay on time. I mean, there has to be some incentive incentive for people to pay on time. And if you have, if it costs you five or ten dollars more, nobody's going to pay on time. So I think we're on the right track with our. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, anything from you, Councilor Grover? Call the motion. Okay. All in favor? In favor. Carried. 7.6. Request for decision. Forgiveness of tax penalty for customer NAP005, page 15 in the package. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I'll, I'll uh, just want to share. Uh, again, uh, the repair has requested uh, the council um, if they would consider reversing the late charges of, in this instance of four hundred and seventy dollars and ninety cents. Um, again, I will make the recommendations um, that the County of Stettler number six forgive the November 1st, 2021 penalty in the amount of $470.90 for customer NAT005 or the County forgive a portion of the penalty or that the County of Stettler Council advisory rate pair the request is denied. Council Silver, I would move um, option number three to uh, deny the request. Questions, concerns, Council This is another one I find it's uh, five days late. One day I don't mind. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Fair. Carried. Request for decision 7.7 uh, forgiveness tax penalty for customer WAL007, page 18. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the last one for penalties. Sharon, I'll let you speak to it. Again, uh, the repairs have asked uh, Council to consider forgiveness in the November 2021 uh, penalty um, in the amount of 224.36. Um, again, the recommendations for the County of Stettler forgive the November 1st, 2021 penalty in the amount of $224.36 for customer WAL092 or the council, County of Stettler forgive a portion of the penalty or the County of Stettler council advisory pair the request is denied. Councilor I'll move that we uh, take option three. Okay, thank you. Questions, concerns? What option are you going with? Option three, Councilor Grover, is that it's denied. Okay. Seeing no other questions, all in favor? Favor. Carried. 7.8, request for decision, uncollectible property taxes on oil and gas properties, 20, page 26 of the package. This never happens, does it? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is an, another annual housekeeping thing that we have to do so we can apply for the perk, and I'll let Sharon walk you through it. Um, as Yvette said, it's um, it's a, a credit um, application basically that we make to the province uh, for the provincial education requisition credits um, and to the designated industrial requisition credits um, of oil companies that we do are unable to collect from. Uh, the, the company, the majority of the company that's involved with this one is um, a company that is U.S. based. Um, there's no longer a residence in Alberta. So the Alberta Energy Regulator has basically um, pulled everything in and there is a few of the assets that have been sold off um, to other companies and the rest have gone to Orphan Well. So there is no recourse in, in collecting any of the taxes that are outstanding at this point in time. And so our recommendation is to um, cancel the taxes on oil and gas properties, whereas the property taxes for certain oil and gas properties have remained unpaid from two from the year of 218, 19, 20, and 21. Pursuant to um, section 347, the Municipal Government Act, the county of the Council of County of Stettler may cancel or reduce arrears. And whereas council makes a motion to cancel the taxes for property identified on the attached appendix. And whereas a motion to cancel and reduce tax arrears does not have any effect on the requirement to remit education property taxes to the provincial province of Alberta. Therefore, it be resolved that council cancel the 218-219, 220, 221 property taxes for the identified um, properties attached on appendix 
in the Appendix A, totaling 123,915.17, and direct administration to apply for the province of Alberta for the provincial education recreation, requisition credit for on collectible education taxes on oil and gas, identified for the years 218, 219, 220, 221 um, of the attached appendix. The other thing that um, in order for us to collect this credit, um, all of the accounts have to be at a zero balance uh, for us to go forward with the application. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments? Council Gender? I'm just kind of wondering if there are some properties of Kent's where this outfit, like they are they're paid and other ones not. So like, are the, the ones that are highlighted in yellow, is that the ones that we are looking at? Um, um, no, they're all, we're all looking at all of them. The ones that are highlighted in yellow, the, two, the 2021 taxes were transferred to another company. As I mentioned, some of the assets have been sold from that particular company. And the 2021 taxes were transferred to the other company and paid. It's just the arrears from um, going back to 218 that are outstanding that belong to can search. What some outfit has done, they've come in and cherry picked the best ones. Yep. And, um, it, that very well could have happened, but whether whether a company picked, uh, purchased any of these assets um, for 2021, it still we, we would have had the 2021 taxes also on here because this company is basically non-existent because there is no residency, residency in Alberta and therefore they cannot operate in Alberta. Thank you, Sharon. Plus we've already absorbed this bad debt, right, Krista, by basically writing it off in the last financial statements and now we're just officially writing it off to collect that. The perk of the dirt. I just have a comment if I can. Uh, the one question I have is some of these wells that I see on this list are starting to be, they may possibly be getting reactivated. Um, and we've had the other issues from some of the sites. So what happens if management from the previous company reactivates these wells? Can, can we not go back on them or are we, we're stuck? Well, they talked about it at RMA that remember they said that they are not tax collectors i have a i have a real real problem with that when we have you have the registry office in alberta can collect um, debt owing on individuals that haven't paid their fines and haven't paid their um, back um, child support etc and they just deny service that's how this should be working exactly the same is if these individual companies are now going through that they're just denied service so or these wells that's what the county of Stettler has been lobbying for for basically what the last four or five years um especially with the aer the aer should be able to to uh flag these properties and if they start up again with say a bitcoin mining operation or something like that they should have to pay their back taxes and actually the same president yeah that was another one that we lobbied against you guys were part of it where we're seeing basically they bankrupt one company and then go form another company so the uh, aer as of december 1st did announce uh, a new directive directive 88 which is their licensee life cycle management and finally included in their risk assessment is un is both unpaid taxes to the municipalities as well as unpaid service leases uh, to landowners, which is another big issue we've heard about from our residents. Um, we haven't really yet seen how this is going to roll out, um, but it's a fairly significant announcement regardless. Um, and we're hoping that it it meets some of these issues we're facing where, uh, yeah, if you're, if as a licensee, you're not, you're not paying your, your debts to both municipalities, 
and the landowners, then you don't get a license. And that was a bill that just went through the list. Right. And so they should be able to take this list that we send, right, up to them, and they should be able to flag those properties. And if activity starts up again on those properties, then we should be getting what's owed to us, and the farmer should be getting what's owed to him. This should not be new to them because suspended well list, you had to handle your suspended well list properly in the past if you intended to get drilling licenses, pipeline licenses, uh, compressor facilities licenses, etc. Somewhere, somehow, that got dropped to the wayside, and that's why our orphan well fund is going through the roof. So I think the board, they should know what they're supposed to do with this, but hopefully they'll, they do it right this time. Councillor Stevens? And RMA, they discussed... Uh, a new potential law where municipalities would be able to lean sites. That's the directive that, that Andrew's that's talking the about. Yeah. Directive. Yeah. So I was under the impression that we as a municipality would then have the power to lean that site. What does that lean go away if it starts up as a new company? We don't know. The devil's in the details yeah, yet. We still don't. We, we um, no, this is what the bill came through, but we haven't had a chance to rip it apart. Yeah, but then we're leaning a, a site that's leased from a, a landowner and that may have property that's absolutely worthless to us and the abandonment is worth more than than what the equipment yeah. on the site is. So it's the devil is in the details on that one. Councilor Grover? Yeah. Oh, that's the oil, oil companies oh, trying yeah. to get away with this all the time. It should be no different than anybody else. You should have be able to put a lien on them. I don't pay my taxes for three years. They come sell my farm. That's how it is. And uh, these guys here, yeah, changing their name from ABC to BCA and all that. They got to deal with that. That's up to the provincial government. But they should start dealing with this stuff. Same as the 35% that they took off our gas wells and now uh gas is six dollars and what six dollars and 80, 80 cents a kilo you know when they did that it was two dollars anything over three oh they're gonna pay everything they're gonna pay uh you hear the same thing all the time they don't seem to want to clap down on oil companies that's my opinion thank you uh, lots of discussion on this but uh, we need the motion on what we feel we should be doing as council I'll make a motion that we um, go ahead with the write-off and um, recommendation. Um, we cancel the taxation on oil and gas properties. Therefore, being able to claim back our... Right. Yeah. So. Other questions, concerns? All in favor? You're in favor, Councilor Grover? Yep, in favor. Okay. Carried. 7.9, request for decision, re-recreation special project funding, page 30 of our package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll let Lorraine, she's with us, speak on this. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so we had six projects that would be submitted for the recreation special project funding this year um, for the October 31st deadline. Uh, they totaled forty-two thousand four fifty-four sixty-five cents. Um, after evaluations and discussion by the regional rec board, um, they are recommending um, projects totaling thirty-nine thousand six hundred and four sixty-six to the five groups listed. Our recommendations the uh, county to approve the following projects for funding from the regional recreation special project reserve totaling 39,604.66. Councilor Stevens. Um, <clears throat> there was, uh, just, just for everyone to know, there was one that is not being recommended that we be funded a portion of one of the applications. We felt that it didn't meet the criteria that paying for computers isn't, uh, A, it's too easily removed from a facility and not sure if that's recreational based. So a portion of one was rejected and is not recommended. Um, 
But uh, to get the ball rolling, I will make the motion that we uh, <clears throat> we approve the uh, the funding at the amount of thirty nine thousand six hundred four and sixty six cents. Thank you. Any questions, concerns? Councilor Grover? In favor. Uh, okay. Motion. Let's get her done. Yeah, motion. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we've got request for decision sponsorship of sport equipment, page 31 of the package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll let Lorraine speak to this one also. Um, at the Stuttler um, Regional Rec Board meeting, um, the Stuttler District Ag Society has uh, approached us to partner with them um, to purchase some equipment um, for homeschool children to play basketball in their facility during the winter months. Um, they've had numerous requests uh, by children and families um, to utilize their facility. Um, the Ag Society um, is available, is willing to partner with them in, in um, using the facility and also in purchasing the basketball equipment um, and it may entail also some other sports um, further down the line. Um, the regional rec board also gave them some information on other uh, funding avenues such as kids sports, other minor hockey uh, to pursue for additional equipment needs um, that may um, they may need going forward. Um, the motion was made at the Regional Rec Board to support the Southern District Ag Society to partner and sponsor $250 for the purchase of the basketball equipment. Um, council can either support the purchase of $250 or decline sponsorship for the Southern District Ag Society request for funding of the sport equipment. Um, the amount could be funded through the Rural Development Reserve or any of the recreation department expense accounts, such as recreation leadership development. Um, this amount was um, figured out basically what we usually um, contribute to 4-H fund day. Um, so about the equivalent of that is where this $250 came from. Thanks, Lorraine. Councilor Stevens. I would like to add that uh, they said that they were also in discussions with uh, Heartland Youth Centre, giving them another option to use this facility. And uh, I, I do think that this is kind of critically important uh, in the sense that our kids have missed out on a tremendous amount during COVID and all the restrictions. So we came in below our budget of 50,000 for the rec even with approving this 250 we would still be within that allotted amount so i'll make the motion that uh we go with number one support the stettler ag society to partner and sponsor 250 dollars for the purchase of basketball equipment okay. Alfred, um, yeah i would diminish through mr chairman through to administration are we still giving the ag society other funding other than the special that we were giving seventy five hundred dollars or something. So I think it is right, Lorraine, seventy five hundred dollars a year. Uh, seven thousand. Seven thousand operational assistance. Yes, yeah. correct. Seven thousand. So I, I mean, I, this is what comes up on a regular basis for us. We have this, um, what we consider a double dip in the in the sense that they ask for special rec funding and this operational assistance to the tune of seven thousand, and it, it has been brought up numerous times. I also see a double dip on this in the school side of things where part of my education tax um, is supposed to pay for everybody that's going to school. And I know that if you are an individual that is in the homeschool system, I think you can make application for um, equipment funding. There is some opportunity for them to do that as an individual um, going forward. I'm not so sure it almost seems like you're taking, and I, I consider this to be education do dollars. Um, if you were in the regular school system, um, you would be using the school uh, gym, and uh, I get that. Um, I'm not against the, the homeschooling, uh, but I am wondering if tax dollars are being subverted not intentionally, but being subverted from our 
tax dollars and our educational tax dollars are they um, are the municipal taxes being subverted to educational dollars where this should be coming from? Council Stolberg. Um, part of the municipal dollars are, are getting stretched so thin all the time for municipal purposes. So I don't know if we want to open the can of worms and get into the supporting school type things. Because if you support homeschooling, why aren't we uh, supporting colon, colony schools and Mennonite schools and every other type of uh, education system out there? So I know the amount's very small, but why are we about just opening the can of worms for uh, school funding? Councilor Stevens? Uh, perhaps there's a cleaner way to do this. If I were to remove my motion, I understand as a counselor, I have $300 annually that I can choose to use for a special purpose. Is it possible I remove my motion and just say, I would like to use my annual $300 for this cause, and then we're not opening up that can of worms? Is that acceptable? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, oh. I might not even close. Okay, well, uh, discussion. Officer Bender. We're asking for 250. Are you going to say it's 250 no, or no, the whole? I'll just interest? go with the 300. They, they were asking for 250. They need more than that. They were going to fundraise the difference. So I'll just go with the full 300. And I just, the caution I have is, and I, I, I know we got a new counselor, and I'm not trying to take away from that at all, but budgetary items. Did the previous counselor utilize their? Um, donation, if we could check. I don't think they. I don't think sure did. But okay. No, and that's all. I, it is. A, it's a yearly budget system, and I'm just, unfortunately you came in eight, no, eight, eight months into it, and then if they would already spent it, it we, I would be a little bit negligent to say that that was the case. I'm checking right now. There, that would not be a motion uh, because uh, yes, yes. It, the authority is given to each councillor to approve yeah. that. So yeah, we would actually present a motion. So yeah. yeah. So if, uh, as long as uh, we'll give Chris a second to confirm that the, the funds are available, because if not, then we might wish to put his motion on the front. Yeah. So. And I have another question. Short, so I can't remember. Well, and often these these types of requests don't come to the council table because, as mentioned, each of you individually has the authority to approve up to that three hundred dollars per year, and we budget three hundred times seven for that. Uh, based on the information I have, I do have to speak to Yvette and Andrew about one item in here. But based on the information I have, uh, Councillor Nixon would have used his amount as well as. Uh, Councillor Stolberg has used his amount. That's all I remember. Otherwise, you're So we're we're fine just removing that the way we did, Andrew. Yeah. Okay. And you you we can do that direction. I think we could and receive for we can make the motion to receive for information with Councillor Stevens um, utilizing his, and then we can vote on it. Yeah. That way, it's you got a paper trail of what we did. You're, you're making that motion. No, he should make the motion to receive for information with utilizing my three hundred dollars for the two fifty. I will make the motion that uh, we receive this for information, and I will use my three hundred dollars for for the uh, uh, two hundred fifty dollar donation. Uh, or just donation. Yeah, I'll, I'll donate the full three hundred. Okay, there you go. Okay, Councilor Grover. I'd like to talk. I'd like to talk to this one. You gotcha. Uh, I think we all missed something there. I agree with Mr. Nyberg. God, that's what twice this year now. Uh, but anyhow, uh, they got an operating thing that we small amount. I realize that it's uh, for the center Ag Society there, and it also that that building is fairly busy. They make good money at renting it out. And they have seven thousand dollars, and this shouldn't have come to council. This should have come out of their operating thing. That's my personal opinion. So I'll uh, I'll be not because I've got anything against Justin stepping up and throwing his three hundred dollars in there, but I will be voting against it. That's for the reasoning. Thank you. Actually, we're just receiving for information. There's nothing yeah. to vote against, Mr. Grohman. Sorry, just to I'm still opposed to. 
you can, well, I guess you can be opposed to receiving it for information, but I all yeah. favor. Councilor yeah. Grover opposed. We can't dictate what Justin donates his name anyway. <laughs> Administration might look at it if it's something on the left field, but <laughs> fair enough. Mark. It is always in left field. <laughs> 7.11 request for decision road construction cost sharing page 33 of the package. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It just sent us here to walk you through this RFD. Thank you. We received a request for cost sharing. Um, the applicant was required to upgrade a portion of 19.2 as a condition of subdivision approval. So we do have our cost sharing policy where 50% of the cost uh, would be uh, provided. So the cost, total cost of the repairs was $11,860.80. So the applicant is requesting 50% of that total, which is $5,930.40. A copy of the invoice and the request is attached to the RFD. <coughs> Okay, thanks, Jacinda. Councilor Gunner? What was the total length of the road that was built? Um, well, the approach uh, well, the approach was uh, right at the beginning of the parcel. So 30 meters beyond the approach, I don't have the full length. If Rick was familiar with the project, he probably could best answer that. Plus or minus 120 meters, 100 meters. Thank you. So, I understand we have a policy in place for this. Why is this coming to council? We always pray that to council. And, then, and then not that I'm, I, I think we need to look at this because I, I get where you're coming from a bit, but I mean, our packages seem to get longer and longer and longer. This is strictly an administration system. I don't know if we, it's nothing outside of what where policy states. So, no, I think this is pretty standard as long as, uh, you know, Rick signs off on it. Um, it would simply be an administrative function. But in the past, council has wanted to see what's going on and who's built road, who hasn't. Mr. And Chairman, I'll give you the motion to approve this. Okay, Councilor Member, or Councilor Gender, pardon me. I find that uh, if it was tendered out, then it's okay to, to, to leave in their hands. But this one here is just done by hourly. And it's great to be able to see like what the rates do come in at. It, again, it's administration detail, but they, we they, realistically, this is something you can't vote against anyways, because our policy, you can't vote against our policy. So it's a rubber stamp. I'll just clarify, actually, the, the policy does specify that it's council may authorize the cost sharing and it's a may, not a must. Oh, okay. so you do have discretion. Okay, fair enough. Then. Should this not be a conversation before the road is built? Um. He's utilized this policy in the past, so he's well aware of it. Yeah. Maybe that's something maybe clarity though, that if we are gonna ask. We we pretty much make it standard knowing that it's it, it, we're gonna give you ten thousand dollars towards road improvements. So I, I don't know. That's kind of our it's it's been one of those incentives to development. So if it's done right, we don't care. Um that's our biggest concern, I think, going forward. And I don't, I don't have a problem with you coming to council. I just, I, I, I'm trying to streamline a little bit of business. That's all. Councilor Grover. I, I agree with what we're doing here, and I, I like to see the staff comment to give us half an idea what's going on in the county and, and what the cost is. If one of your ratepayers asks, you can always tell you can tell them this. That we have this bylaw, and that's what it is. I, I think it's good. I'm voting for it. Okay, any other questions, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor? Favor. Car carried. 7.12, request for decision, award bridge load evaluations, page 37 of the package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick, you just want to speak to this? Yep. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so you're probably all well aware that we've got five uh, bridges around the county at this point that have been low rated down to, I think they're all at 10 ton right now. And that's based on a 
just a general inspection cycle, uh, thumb suck on sort of what makes sense. It could very well be that they're good for 20 or 30 ton, um, but we obviously have to worry about the liabilities one out of both the inspector and the county. So we've got them down to 10 unless there's something egregious underneath there that we think it may need to be less. So the, uh, the five that we have, one of them is land access only way up in the northeast. One of them is the bridge, I believe, on the Bymore access, Big Valley access, Big Valley access, sorry. And then the other three are, I believe, closer to the Gadsby Both area. Unfortunately, um, this, this does fall into our, our jurisdiction as far as what the province says. Even we may disagree on whose bridges they are and on what road they're on, such as the one at Big Valley. This is very much a make sure that what we're doing is correct. Alberta Transportation did contact us and said this is the next step if you're load rating bridges. So let's make sure we're doing it. Obviously, they're not providing us any funding, which is unfortunate. However, uh, we do need to make sure that our, our uh, liabilities are covered here. So we did go out for a proposal um, based on the, I believe it's written in there, the bridge load evaluation manual that Alberta Transportation provided us, which is the next step in what we're supposed to do according to them. Uh, we got proposals as noted up top there. The one proposal that was the lowest price was very much lacking in the knowledge of the load rating manual and the requirements that we require in order to get us where we need to go and make a recommendation for both. Is the loading correct that we have on there? Can we change it? And what are the obvious repairs that we may need to do on it rather than just straight replace? Financially, we do have theoretically money in our uh, in our bridge GL for this type of thing. A uh, bunch of it's obviously been utilized through the bridge covers that we were doing and is, I would assume, a temporarily temporary holder in that GL, but we haven't spent our, I think it was $40,000 roughly at this point, and then we'd expect the rest of the difference to be taken up just in general budget if it's approved. Does that frame things up enough to understand? How many, how many bridges are we looking at? Are we looking at the whole county? There are five bridges that are currently load rated, so our regular inspection cycle flag these things based on primary load carrying members uh, being being low rated and we're looking at ten thousand dollars per bridge with this would we wouldn't we be better just putting ten thousand dollars worth of work into the bridges no this is a cya i guess ten thousand dollars would probably get you any coat of paint <laughs> well that'll fix it <laughs> ten thousand dollars but the sign up i will uh i will make the motion that we go ahead with um wsp they understand it um unfortunately the lowest bid in this case doesn't uh, hit the review scoring and i'm not willing to take a substandard for this particular safety issue so Correct. we do need the familiarity and wsp has done a lot of work on our bridges over the past and a lot of confidence in the staff that they got to give us good advice here i've got a question back to rick also is there any other ones that are right on that edge that we maybe should be trying to put in with this package to see if it's so much a bridge or if it's so much a group. Rad's out inspecting bridges actually this week um, as he gets stuff and load rates them. That's the next step. We've gathered, <coughs> gathered these five sort of held off on things so we can get one thing going on, but until he identifies more, I know there will be more, uh, but he has to get through his cycle, do his inspections, get the recommendation set and get it through AT as well that they're going to accept the the inspections as is so there is a process because we do have these bridges that are rated to 10 ton that we I, i've witnessed trucks going over the you know or heavier than that it doesn't mean it's a break point it it means our loading rating of 10 tons is definitely conversation between myself and brad to make sure that we're on the cautious side so <laughs> he's protected i'm protected and the county's protected they may very well be back up the full loading after a proper structural engineer comes and looks at things, but the guidelines that we follow in inspections um, ask us to rate them down if they get down to, I think it's a two rating on these primary members. So and then, then we got to we got to pick a number. It could very well be if he finds something that really makes him uncomfortable underneath there, he's going to stand in the middle of the bridge and call me and say, bring barricades, we're closing it. 
But right, wait for the next level. Put up signs, right? Oh yeah, that's yeah, the so very next thing. Is drives. an individual drives over it that is not rated for that bridge. That individual is taking full response. And that's that's what's been stated to the individuals, but it went you know from zero to sixty in one season, and it's access into the field site. And the risk the risk that we do run in a lot of this is one loaded truck goes over it that's over and breaks it but doesn't fall through. The next thing is a lighter school bus goes through it, falls through, but it was already broken. This is that due diligence part of things. We're probably on the cautious side of things, but once again, that's that's part of the game that we have to play. It's very unfortunate there's no funding for it at this point because we can still argue in a lot of cases that this shouldn't be our cost. But. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to talk. Uh, Go ahead, Councilor. Yeah, I have actually. I have two down there that are ten uh, ton. One is an access to uh, north access to the town of Big Valley or village of Big Valley, but it's still in our in my area for my ratepayers. But I think it's that probably should be done by the government. And the other one, I went and had a look underneath of it. I don't know if it should even be ten ton. And uh, yeah, we have a little green scholared area. Yeah, yeah that's the one it's called. And, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, one person uh, phone me about uh, his kid because they'd get home later, and I checked it out, and it, uh, what was it, five miles longer? So what's that, five minutes or six minutes longer, not a half an hour, but anyhow. Uh, I give them all the information, and I haven't heard to think back from them since. Uh, that it, it's the safety of the people in the area, too, and uh, we have got that down there by the gravel pits, and uh, I personally have seen the gravel trucks go across it, and uh, I don't know why they would go that way anyhow, but whatever. Uh, so I think this is a great idea. It's just too bad the provincial government wouldn't fund a little bit of this stuff once in a while. Thank you. Well, just, just to back that up a little bit, too, on that particular bridge, it's on a little road just south of a couple of private gravel pits west of the Scholar Road. We've operated that bridge for years on our regular inspection cycle without load rating it, but not allowing road use agreements over it to haul gravel and whatnot. The latest inspection has shown that it has deteriorated more in recent time. So, you know, we're definitely getting into that. We're seeing movement in that bridge specifically on that one. So. Yep. Okay, Councilor Stilberg. Uh, just a question to Yvette, I guess. When is the next round of bridge granting going to be announced? Or? Six applications in the end of November, and I got the letter of confirmation yesterday, so uh, they did deny one yeah. because it wasn't below 44. So uh, hopefully we'll hear January, February if we get the money to start moving on. So if we do are successful, it'll go to D's like that. These, I believe these five were five of the six we applied for. Right. And that'd be the worry is obviously we're spending money and if we get grant funding for them, we could have just gone to replace them. But in the meantime, right. you don't know. Four this will we got to take care of. Yeah. It, it will protect us if we do a road use agreement and instruct a hauler not to use a bridge that he does. Um, and he falls through or he causes irreparable damage to that bridge for the point where we have to replace it. Then you know we have something to fall back on. Also, we're rerouting school buses, so you know we need to back up what we're saying because you know how people feel when they're five minutes longer on the road. Um, I don't. I don't think we have a choice but to investigate this. I think we need accurate information, and if we're applying for grant money, we need to have shovel-ready projects. If they say yes, and I think this gets us there. So. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Favor. Carried. Okay, our uh, first delegation is here Settler Staff Sergeant Bruce Halliday. Good morning, Bruce. First thing we'll do is introduction so that you can. You know who's at the table? Starting with Nikki. Hi, I'm Nikki Thorstenson, Director of Communications. James Nyberg, Counselor for Erskine South Warden. Good morning, Les Stuber, Counselor by Moran Dang. Justin. Hey, Grover. Oh, you're ahead of yourself. 
Justin oh, Stevens. You're there today, Justin right? Buffalo. Yeah, Justin Stevens. No, you go ahead, Dave. Uh, Dave Grover, Big Valley. Oh, there you go. Hey, Jenner. Good morning. Rick Green, Director of Operations. Director of Municipal Services. Mr. Carnelson, Director of Corporate Services. Thank you, folks. Uh, appreciate your time this morning. I was just wondering, um, am I able to I just have a, mm -hmm. a slide? You're able to take your mask off. Oh, okay. Awesome. I'm hard of hearing, so I got to read your lips. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, for taking the time and having me here this morning. Uh, to give you a brief introduction to myself, I'm a 18 year member uh, of the RCMP. I've uh, been in five different postings, starting in uh, Drumheller, uh, Fort McMurray. Red Deer, uh, Bashaw, and then uh, I was a successful applicant uh, bringing me to Stetler, where I was promoted to staff sergeant here. Um, I, I have the pleasure to uh, bring some stats to you um, for uh, Stetler County uh, on the provincial side, and uh, we're looking pretty good. We're uh, trending downward. Um, so for the period of January to November 2021 versus 2020, We've uh, seen a slight increase in persons crime at 2% two, uh, 2 increase, um, but we have a reduction in property crime of 13% and other criminal code uh, 21%. Uh, property crime breaks down into an 8% decrease, uh, so three less uh, break and enters over that same period uh, from January to November 2021 versus 2020. A 29% decrease uh, with 11 um, fewer uh, thefts of motor vehicles and a 31% decrease uh, of theft under, uh, so 16 fewer instances of theft under uh, in that period. So um, with that being said, uh, I think I wasn't here and, and of course um, I, I would like to give credit to the investigators um, and to the public who have shown uh, uh, help to show uh, this decrease in stats uh, due to uh, their hard work and uh, the engagement with uh, the community that's helping us respond to things and putting us uh, in the right position uh, to be able to uh, address uh, crime in the county. So if um, you have any questions uh, in regard to uh, the stats or what we have uh, occurring uh, in the county right now, I'd be happy to answer any of those your motor vehicle theft guy looks like he's stealing tires. <laughs> it does. I, I think that's the only thing that they could come up with. That person, person's crime, Bruce, what, uh, what's involved with that? So personal crimes are assaults, homicides, um, and, and robberies. Questions for Bruce? Would you attribute that to a certain location being um, disbanded within the last year? So there, there definitely uh, would be uh, some of that with some um, problem individuals uh, vacating the area and moving into other areas. Sometimes that's the best we can do uh, is relocate them. But um, I'm okay with that. It'd be better behind bars, but. Well, I used to say when I was in Bashaw that, well, I'll send him a Stetler, so now i got to send him a drum miller. Um, and we're but, okay with that, too. Yeah, and we're okay with that. So, um, no, I, I, the trending is going well. I, uh, we're getting the detachment uh, going in the direction that I want it to go in, um, in with uh, community engagement being one of the priorities, and then that strong uh, sense of community policing uh, that's so important for us. 
Uh, we can't do it on our own uh, with the investigators. We need the community uh, to help and engage with us and let us know what's going on out there so we can respond effectively uh, uh, in a collaborative uh, approach to addressing uh, problems in the community. And I understand stats help you. So if people should be reporting the crimes to you, even if it seems like a nothing situation, but still report it. 100%. You're never bothering us. We're never uh, uh, too busy. Um, my stance on it is if I don't know about it, we can't do anything about it. So we need to know. Councillor Stevens. I would like an update on the school resource officer and how that's coming along. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I understand that there was some funding that the previous council voted on and I'm just curious when this will be in place. Well, it was it was a community initiative. Oh no no, there there was there was others involved for sure, but uh, I don't I don't know the exact yeah, details. Yeah, yeah, agreed agreed to by the community, and then we agreed to it by. But uh, we were under the event and I were both under the assumption we were moving forward, and then we're hearing rumors that we, we don't have any in the schools yet. There. Yeah, those would be rumors. Um, no, what I can tell you is. Uh, I have identified uh, an individual. We have recruited the individual, and I'm actually um, I'm stealing him out of uh, Basha. He started with me four and a half years ago. Uh, he's very much um, a believer and understands uh, our policing philosophy. Uh, Mrs. Shepard um, was with us in, in Bashaw, at Bashaw School, um, and um, you know, as our largest school here. Uh, so she has an understanding of our policing philosophy, philosophy and our, um, our focus on uh, our early intervention with our youth and our families. So what I can tell you, uh, the position has been vacant until we uh, were able to identify the appropriate person. However, myself and all the detachment members have stepped up uh, to provide that service to the schools. Um, uh, for that school resource officer position. An example was um, on uh, November 30th, we ran the first uh, full lockdown drill uh, with engagement from uh, emergency services. So the first time fire has ever been involved uh, in a lockdown drill, uh, as well as full response from the RCMP, uh, Fish and Wildlife and County Peace Officers participated as well. So we are supplying that service uh, to our schools and we will have, I'm uh, hoping in uh, very early January to have Constable Whitmer, uh, Ben Whitmer is his name, into that position uh, on a permanent basis. Because uh, part, part you know, of our police funding model that uh, came down from the government, we had been indicated by K Division that if the county, like we're talking about it through budget, Bruce, because if the county of Stetler supported that SRO officer fully, it was, we were under the understanding it was to come out of our amount that was basically being allocated from our area and paid for from our area. So that's where this whole discussion started and we will still be trying to talk to K Division, but with a, with an assigned person coming, that's, uh, then, then we can point that body too. But would you update, like you, you, you had your, uh, your, Traffic, uh, and, but also, also Memorial Park, I found very interesting our conversation on that. Could you update the rest of the council on that? Absolutely. Um, this year in um, consultation uh, with Clearview School Division, we chose to have um, uh, Remembrance Day in Memorial Park. And one of the reasons is, is what I saw in the community was the kids using the park um, as a location to vape, um, maybe drink after hours, to um, litter and, and all those types of things. So we, uh, I, I take that very seriously and the history behind that park and the purpose for that park being there. So one, we, we conducted the Remembrance Day ceremony in the park. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, COVID protocols affected actually having the students out in the park, but we did it virtually. Um, but we also engaged a, a member of the community, a veteran, uh, to give the history of the park. And that was included 
uh, in part of that uh, presentation. I don't know if everyone saw that, but it was quite, um, uh, if I can say, it quite touching when he gave the history that uh, the funding for that park came from families who, who lost uh, the members during uh, the war, family members during the war. So it's those type of things with our youth that we need to engage them um, as a community and and we chose uh, to engage them on Remembrance Day and show the importance of uh, Memorial Park. So that's one of the things that we did this year uh, just with Remembrance Day and our young people. Uh, second to that, uh, very early uh, in the school year, uh, third day of school, what we did was uh, uh, an education uh, setting expectations and accountability with our young people as young drivers and community members. So I pulled uh, traffic members uh, out of the district as well as Fish and Wildlife um, and, uh, and, and county uh, resources and we uh, conducted a check stop uh, providing education to all our young drivers uh, that were arriving at the school uh, early in the school year. So from there we discussed um, appropriate driving habits, um, what the fine levies would be for stunting, speeding, uh, those type of things. We also address things like uh, improper vehicle equipment, window tint, lack of mud flaps, um, and everything else that goes along with uh, some uh, young person's vehicles. So we didn't issue any, any uh, violation tickets. But we did provide it, the education to them about what a responsible driver um, is expected to uh, act like in the community, as well as what the repercussions were uh, if they didn't, with fine amounts, uh, demerits, um, addressing their GDL status, uh, those type of things. So we did that early on with our young people. And uh, just to follow through on that message, as the year has gone on, for those that chose not to, I guess, be educated and be responsible, we have followed up with them. And now there's been some issuance of tickets uh, to address inappropriate driving and or uh, flagrant violations of vehicle equipment regulations. Bruce, if I could. Um... So how is your, your staffing situation? Are you at full capacity right now? So um, right now I have a vacancy at the corporal um, position. The, the position itself um, is only vacant because uh, uh, my NCO has is, is, uh, been sent up, seconded up to Basha uh, to act in my uh, vacant position there. But there was a... Um, I guess an administrative situation here that required that to happen. Um, not uh, uh, anything that uh, has to do with our, our staffing here, but it was an administrative uh, situation that required that placement. Um, and then the SRO position. Uh, the SRO position was uh, vacant uh, from the start of the school year and from the uh, signing of the contract, but with the um, the purpose that myself and the, and the detachment as a whole will fulfill that position. Um, even when we do have Constable Whitmer full time in that position, it's my belief that it's the entire detachment's job uh, to support our schools, support our families and support our young uh, people because that's true community policing. And we need to know uh, who our families are who our young people are and support them um, because that early intervention with our young people is important. There are future, uh, there are future community members that we want to be uh, have as productive members in the community versus uh, in a life uh, with the RCMP going down that uh, criminal justice path. Well, one question I had, and an individual told me they had a. Um, one of our members come out and do a safety check for COVID. Um, they pulled up to the door. The officer was very polite, did a very fine job. Um, in fact, they drove, you know, a half an hour out of Stetler or more to deal with this um, call. The question I got, and I like, I don't know the answer. And number one is, who motivates that 
and they, of course, you know, with all the crap that's going on, they're worried, was there a snitch line yeah. or something? And they're worried about that. And secondly, do we have the resources to send somebody out? Sir, thankfully, you guys are driving out in the country. We'd like to see you guys, but we would like to see you for other reasons, just cruising by and waving at us instead of chasing bad guys and checking up on our residents. So what, can you give me some comment to that or a little bit of insight? Absolutely. What I can do is probably if we're speaking of the same events and there's more than one to provide context is uh, through CBSA, um, uh, um, Canadian Border Services, okay. for individuals returning from travel, yeah. they're required to quarantine. There's a partnership there between the RCMP, CBSA, uh, Alberta Health Services, among others, that um, looks to ensure that that individual is abiding by uh, those quarantine requirements. So if that's, and I'm suspecting that's what we're talking about, uh, that's the role we would play is we would go, we'd conduct that check, we'd complete a form that then would be forwarded back uh, through those channels uh, as a reporting uh, mechanism. Okay. So it's not as, that, that clears that up. So they were just wondering why they, because they got a call from, an individual got a call from AHS that morning and then the officer shows up that afternoon and it's kind of like, Eh, what's going on here? That, thank you for that. Yeah, that's and it's something that's happened um, throughout COVID and uh, does change somewhat depending on what the restrictions are uh, that take place. But that's a it's a normal, um, well, it's a normal part of COVID <laughs> business that that we're uh, required to participate in. The terminology that you used a little earlier for your officer that you want to borrow from from a bash off there was like you just said i'm going to steal them so it's just like but i'm just kind of wondering are there, are there certain uh hot spots that you find within our community that are still that we should be all concerned about there are for sure um we we have um uh the, the county um has been doing quite well um doing partly in fact that that maybe some aren't residing at home right now and maybe guests of the uh, <laughs> temporarily with the, the province i guess to tactfully answer that um so that does help uh we do have some uh problem uh locations in town um that we we are uh, addressing as well but uh, we're always uh, interested in any locations because they do pop up uh, rather quickly. And I like to uh, quickly address those problem uh, locations and people before they become um, really problematic. So the quicker we can address things um, and again, set expectations for uh, those individuals, the better it is and sometimes well, I'll be frank that I'll tell them that, well, what you're doing isn't, doesn't go with this community and it's not going to be um, uh, viewed positively. So perhaps you should go elsewhere. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, How many officers do you have working in the stellar detachment? So it's, uh, and sorry, I, I did uh, miss, I, I do have one individual that uh, unfortunately suffered a heart attack uh, in the fall and he's off right now on sick leave. Um, but uh, I've got him coming back to work uh, next week actually in administrative capacity until such time as he's uh, cleared completely for full duty. So generally I would have uh, eight constables uh, the one SRO CPVS position that's uh, currently uh, being filled, uh, two corporals and myself, uh, two municipal support staff uh, providing administrative support and a public service employee office manager. Does that count the traffic like that are based on a black hole or they, they're, they're, they're uh, 
attachments to the black holes, isn't it, that they work out of here? That's correct. So it doesn't count our traffic resources. So I've got, um, they don't report to me, they report uh, through to the provincial uh, traffic uh, unit uh, out of Black Falls. But I've got a corporal and two constables uh, with uh, one vacancy in a constable position right now just to some uh, um, uh, illness, uh, keeping that person from uh, working right now. Uh, yeah, just with the uh, statistics that you have on your screens up here, I would be under the opinion, opinion this is out of the Stetler detachment. Because in my word, I have a big portion of it that's under the Basher detachment, and I'm just wondering if the Basher detachment is seeing about the same kind of numbers. So uh, you are 100% right, sir. This is completely for Stetler uh, jurisdiction. Um, that uh, falls short of, of uh, uh, it covers Red Willow, but doesn't quite go up uh, uh, right to Denalda. Denalda would fall under the Bashaw um, uh, jurisdiction. So um, Bashaw stats, um, uh, I had I, I look at them. I'm you know interested obviously, and uh, they've they've had some increases uh, in some uh, areas. At least um, I know one stolen vehicle in Denalda. Won't uh, go into those specifics, but uh, you might be familiar with that one. <laughs> uh, personal. <laughs> <laughs> Council Grover, do you have any questions for Bruce? No. Are we are we still running a catch and release program? <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm only on the catch side, so we're we're uh, my my investigators are doing a fantastic job uh, catching, and we're putting the best um, product forward to the courts, and then um, whatever's happening in in the courts. Unfortunately, um, I, I have little control other than uh, in that situation, other to make sure that we're putting our best product forward and that individual isn't getting released based on something we've done or something we haven't done. So that's the best we can do as a, uh, as a police service is uh, to make sure we're doing our jobs properly and, and the courts, unfortunately, uh, that's, uh, if it's gonna be a catch and release situation, that's, uh, that's in their uh, realm. I think if you release them back home to the, the judges that are letting them out and they stay there for two or three weeks with their family, probably would help your cause a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I just have one. Okay. I guess in my board too, we're, I'm, this, our board is served by Stetler, Hannah, and Drumheller detachments. And so if there is a crime, close to the boundaries. Is it? Is there any difficulty in crossing into the other um, the zone or areas to, to continue to catch the criminals or do you have to call them to do it or how does that work? No, there's uh, definitely not uh, an issue with that. We do engage the other detachments uh, to assist. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, detachment commander in uh, Drumheller and myself um, have a long history together, worked in uh, in Fort McMurray together and know each other quite well and, and do communicate uh, somewhat regularly. So definitely if there is something, um, I, I can give an example, uh, Wednesday night Drumheller was very busy and uh, they happened to have a sudden death that occurred uh, just uh, into the Drumheller area. But um, uh, request that Stetler members uh, assist with that, and we did go down and conduct that investigation for them, uh, being that they were um, uh, saddled with uh, priority matters that uh, that were affecting their availability. But uh, no, we do uh, back each other up. We do uh, go into other. Uh, jurisdictions at times when I was in Bashaw, I was down here in Stetler at times and, and vice versa. Um, our our uh, individuals that are committing crime, they don't know where the boundaries are and, and don't really care. But um, for us to be effective, we have to have that, uh, that ability to go elsewhere. And as the RCMP, uh, we're able to do that. Oh, that's good. 
that's very good. That's good, good to hear. Otherwise, I'm sure they pick up on that. The criminals would pick up on that really fast. And yes, be jumping boundaries. I think I could be persuaded. <laughs> you betcha. That's that, that's why you were tying. Yeah, so we will break his lunch here, Nikki. Yes, yes. So motion to recess? Yes, you betcha. Motion to recess. All in favor? Carried. Favor. We're talking an hour, Councilor Grover. Are you a One hour. Thank, thank you.
call, we'll call the meeting back to order at uh, 103. And where we left off at was 7.13, request for decision, NAVIS cleanup, which is additions page three of the package. 7.13, uh, I should say. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is Clint here? Did he want to present this or do you want to do it? Okay. So this is just Okay. This is just seeking uh, council to uh, pursue a court order against a property in Nevis, which is going to require the removal of certain properties. Um, they've been given since uh, April was when we first, the end of April was when we first touched base with them. We followed up with them several times. Uh, they had a bit of time there that there was a little bit of progress. Um, lots of vehicles that are out under the road right of way and many on their own property as well as unkempt grass. Um, there's pictures in your additions package that sort of shows the state of the property, but um, we would be looking to get an order from the court just because the um, amount of private property involved or vehicle property involved, um, it just it's cover cover ourselves from the liability perspective technically we've got the authority under the act section 646 to go in and uh, undertake the cleanup but um these are one of those situations where getting the blessing of the court first is usually a good idea so where does the property end and begin do we know um we did have it uh staked out by gis I'm not sure if the state I'm just wondering if if compliance can be throwing a fence up or something. No, um, there's a, a lot here that is actually on the municipal right of way. I think likely the, the fence you see in this photo is the actual property. I think that's a sea can, isn't it? No, nope, that's a fence line there. Where is it? Uh, Looks like a sea can. Maybe a sea can. Oh, no, it might be a dumpster. Oh, it might not be. A, hang on. I'm pretty sure it's a sea can. Yeah, no, I've got. Uh, <clears throat> I can show you briefly. Yeah, it's it's quite significantly into the right of way in. So, um, so do they live on this property? Or that is my understanding that they live on. Yeah, that they live in that property. Um, There's a little house inside of there. Yeah, we have been able to make contact with them a couple of times, so not that recently. Um, and spoken with them while issuing these orders, and at that time we're able to explain sort of. You know what you got to do more than the black and white what needs to back us up but unfortunately we haven't seen any changes as a result so it's this property you see on your left here so you can see how much is actually outside of the yeah and that dumpster actually that's shown there the the sea can would be entirely outside of their property so those are the two buildings on the end. And I just I always assumed that property went right to the roadway, but no, it's huge, right? It is, yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's probably one of your standards, sixty-six foot right of ways, but that looks pretty big when it's just an alleyway. Mm -hmm. Well, if you took the road to the to the south there and, and you extended it straight ahead, it would look like it's the same. yeah, it almost looked the same when it yeah. So with that cleanup, what ha what does happen with that building? It looks like one might be a sea can, but on the on the south side. Yeah, we're not seeking any changes to the building at this time. Um, it, or it hasn't been in our enforcement orders to date um, to levy that. We'd actually have to get a, a land surveyor in, and we'd work really for something like that. The the remediation is likely just entering into an encroachment agreement. Um, it's the rest of the cleanup that they could have and should have undertaken by now that. We want to see some action on the rest is fairly benign. How did it work in the Red Willow? Have they been compliant now? Like the property over by 601 or? Yes. Oh, right. There was no right. 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 In Red, uh, Red Willow. I believe that one is seeing better compliance now. But I, I to be honest, I don't have that file well memorized anyway. Um, yeah, this is just one where we feel we've exhausted our ability to encourage compliance voluntarily, and we unfortunately have to go to the next stage. Justin's got the goodies. Mm -hmm. Justin's got the goodies. Well, I'll 
uh, I'll make the uh, motion that we go with staff recommendation and proceed with enforcement of the nuisance bylaw to have the property brought into compliance. In my opinion, we're now at like eight, nine months of seeking voluntary compliance. We've made contact several times. If he was going to comply, I believe he, he or she probably would have in nine months time. So I think we, uh, we're safe to escalate this. Questions, comments? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor? Councilor Grover? Do you need it here? Councilor Grover? Yeah, we can't, uh, you look up there, Dave, but we can't hear you. Shows that you're not muted, at least not on the Zoom call, unless you're muted from your phone. I can see a truck from here, Gus. Okay. Well, it's carried. Um, Maybe try calling back in, Councillor Grover, because we can't uh, can't hear you. Okay, under item 10, bylaws. We go right to 10.1. Yep. Okay, 10.1 bylaw 1670-21 regional SDAB uh, bylaw review. Uh, we, there was one we were to have the public hearing on, but uh, yeah, yeah, we just need to set a new date for the we public hearing new date for it. And we'd be looking for a date for January 12th. Councilor Stewart. I will move that we postpone this um, uh, bylaw hearings until January 12th. 2022. Okay. And our public hearing will be there then also? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, any questions, concerns? All in favor? Councilor Grover? I heard him. Yeah. I thought we heard him too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Carried. 10.2 bylaw 1671-21 Buffalo Sound Special Tax Levy for first, second, and must be third reading. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is an annual bylaw that we pass. Um, we pass that until the subdivision is completely built up, and it helps offset the cost of the utilities. House Stewart. I will move first reading. Any questions or, or com council gender? This money, like, is it put towards anything? So I'm just kind of wondering, being that in uh, those repairs that we did. So basically, what it is is uh, anyone that is hooked up to the water line pays a twenty dollar flat rate, rate, and and every month, right? So the, basically, they're paying two hundred and forty dollars a year um, administration fees for the water communal water to be there this is ensuring that they wouldn't have to pay more so it goes into general revenue just like that twenty dollars a month goes into general revenue i'm just kind of wondering like in the when we had that water line repair should we be putting something this into reserves for possibility of right so any profit that we've recognized over the last few years, we put into a general reserve. We haven't, um, you know, allocated it to water or sewer repairs. We could do that. That's totally up to council. But I don't think we've put anything away yet for repairs to these subdivisions. Um, just like with Buffalo View Estates last year with the water leak, we had put that money into general revenue. We did post a profit, then we put it into a general reserve, if we have to pull from that reserve, that will pay for the repairs, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah and, and as part of that too, that $20 fee is to help maintain that system for when they want to tie into it too. So right. they're, they're just paying the, the minimum for, well, until till they use it. And, and that fee though, I mean, we just discussed yesterday, the fact that when we send out a utility bill, just mailing it's 10 bucks, right? 
So really, it's not even covering the cost of the utility bill. We need we need to look at that. So, I mean, going forward, Councillor Stevens, there was some discussion about fee levels, yeah. obviously during budget talk. Uh, do do we want to lock this in at twenty dollars for the year if there's a potential that this fee changes? This isn't a fee. This is the tax levy bylaw. This is added to that, the tax. I, I know, but part of the justification is to make it so that it it, it matches the fee. If, if we're trying to move them both in parallel, could we not do it so that this there there's potential to match this to whatever our fee is decided on? Like postpone the bylaw and then backdate it so it's effective January one. When you decide on if you want to increase the fee or not. Yeah, I don't think it's too big. It's just a little messy, but we could amend the bylaw also, right? I'm I'm okay with this because these guys don't have service yet, right? But it's still the minimum fee. Yeah. That all well. Right, but it's uh just a way to offset the the cost because if the users were paying for it, like every year we get more and more build up. But in the beginning, it would have been a horrendous cost for them to try and maintain the system on their own. We'd be having a two tier system in this one for the ones that are already connected and the ones that aren't connected. So if we can amalgamate this all together when we go and look at our budgeting. And I'm and I I'm okay with that because this doesn't have to be passed this year, does it? I'm just trying to quickly check if we have to pass it before the new year. I don't think so. Like, I think you can level levy a special tax anytime, but uh, give them three months notice or something. Uh, I don't even know if we need to do that. Let me check. Maybe a 30 day notice, mm -hmm. but we just want to quickly see. Uh, we could bring it back and change it then again, too. Yeah, like we can amend the bylaw and, and put an effective date in. I know what you're saying about doing it twice, but that might be the case that we have to do. <laughs> And that's fair. I'm just trying to yeah, trying to make it yeah. fair, fair for the people tied in and those that aren't. If, if this is supposed to compensate that user fee and, and be somewhat matching, then probably to keep as clean as we need to for this year if we do this and then have to go back and amend it if we do make a change. I think. If you're not hooked up, you don't receive it. Right. Right. So this is just to try and somewhat keep it equal and equitable, right? That's what we have to get back to, and this is equitable because they're not. It, it's really not costing us money to have them there, i.e., yeah. the bill being sent out to them. Because it must be special. passed annually. Yeah, which is the thing that the regular tax rate bylaw has to be passed annually. It's yeah. transactional in nature. And we passed our tax rate bylaw in May, June, and it's effective basically for the calendar year of January yeah. to December. Um, yeah, I mean, we can sit on it if you want. I don't know how you guys build this, standard. Do you build it once a year? Or? Yeah, it's built with, yeah. Tax, with a proper tax. I think so. Okay. Can we get a clarification? If it's property tax, we can do it in May. I think regardless, we could do it in May and bill it. We could, if, if we're not doing it with the tax premises now, there's no reason we couldn't start that practice now. So. I, I think that's okay. we could be comfortable if you want to delay um, until budget deliberations are finalized, then we can definitely do that, um, which could be as late as the revised budget in May. So, would you consider Mr. Stolberg tabling this motion? Yes. To our May meeting? Can we table well, we, we, we can actually pick it whatever, wherever, whatever we want to do. Yeah, I would say future meeting. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Stoller, do you? Yeah, I'll move that this um, be tabled till a future meeting in the new year. Okay. All in favor? Councillor Grover? No. Yeah. I saw him not. Gary, just asking to mute you now, Dave, to see. Yeah, I think you'll have to hit the star six on your phone. Or hit the mute button in the bottom left. Don't have them? No. Wait, 
Looks like you're unmuted now, but I don't know if we can hear you, Dave. Want me to go up? Check on him? Oh, I think, I think he's making noise, so. He's always making noise. Yeah. Dave, do you have no? Okay, 10.3 bylaw 1672-21 Buffalo Review Estate Special Tax Levy for, for second, third grade. This would be the same. If you want to carry it over. Let's it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wear your mask and hand sanitize because he's got a pretty... Yeah. He's immune deficient somewhere. Um, what's the one? Uh, yeah, can we take a short break? break? Maybe yeah. we'll just take a short break. Can you take us off media, Andrew? Yeah. Please. <clears throat> It might just be nothing. Hold the window again. Oh, okay. 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 Um, yeah, so we we're just on 10.3 bylaw 1672 21 Buffalo View Estate Special Tax Levy. It will also be postponed to see if we do any changes okay. to that flat rate. Okay, 10.4 bylaw 1673 21 operating. Motion to table that. Oh, motion to table that. Okay. Okay. Council um, Stevens. I'll make that motion to table uh, bylaw 1671 21. 1672 21. Correct. Okay. Uh, he did the first one. There's two. Um, any questions, concerns? All in favor? Favor. Carried. We heard you that time, Dave. 10.4 bylaw 1673 21 operating borrowing bylaw for first, second, and third readings, page 80. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is, uh, we do this annually every year. Uh, we have to do it so that every year we look at what we may need uh, for borrowing within the County of Settler. We've never used it yet, but it's nice to have it there as backup. It also secures the visas. And uh, we have several visas that we use for training and convention purposes. And I think we're looking at doing the borrowing bylaw for three million. Yeah. Three million. Three million. Three million. First reading. Questions, concerns. I, I 
can't quite see the amount. Where's the amount? The amount is in the bylaw proper, right at the top there. We have done five million front tests. We only did five million while the shop was being built because we were concerned about the capital expenditures. Dipping the account down, it was never actually necessary. No. Uh, and in fact, most years we don't dip into the larger portions of the operating bylaw, and it sits there just to maintain the visas. But we're cognizant of the fact that we collect most of our revenue in October, uh, and a lot of the year has to go by before we collect it. No questions, concerns? Uh, all in favor? Favor. Councilor Gender? Second reading, please. Questions, concerns? All in favor? Favor. Okay, carried. To take us to third. I'll move it. We go to third. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Uh, Aye. <laughs> carried. Now we need third reading. Okay. 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 Third reading. All in favor? Favor. Carried. Okay. Um, reports. Chief Administrative Officer's report, page 83 of the package. Everybody's had time to review that. Was there a question? I'll move it. Councilor Brewer. Big. And if you have any public works questions, uh, Rick's still here. Councilor Gender. On uh, page 85 for Botha, they're saying to continue to monitor the for water loss on Botha Rural. Has that been happening for? Um, on that one, I'm not sure that it's. Uh... We have had some concerns that there is. It's a small amount of water loss, but I'm correct. Yeah, we, we often do uh, water audits uh, to check, and I'm guessing that that's, that one's at the threshold of somewhere between normal operation and area for concern. But in that area, I'm thinking it's not a significant amount. I can follow up, though, and get more information for you on that one. You don't really have it pointed down in or pinpointed any particular area? Uh, luckily, they have it down to a, a single branch off the main line. Um, that's typically how we'll always be able to uh narrow it down because we've always got instantaneous reads on our flow volume so but, but botha rural is it off the six inch line or is it off is it sample moth off surely mm -hmm. I, I can't say for sure based on that line alone i'll, I'll follow up again I, I heard that the counselor on the south side might have been hot tap <laughs> <laughs> um, that's on the surety i'm only on the surety there mm -hmm. both is on the north side so <laughs> Yeah, generally that whole area, I am I would fall victim to calling everything Botha Rural because it's around Botha and it's rural. It wouldn't necessarily mean it's off the Botha or the co-op lines. It's just it's just if it was off that six-inch line, you, you'd have to be looking hard because it's uh, metered at Stettler, metered at Botha, and then it would be, okay, what's happening in between? But you have valves in between, right? Uh, there's there is valves, but there's also meters. The meters are on the end users. Yeah, I'm just saying, like if we would normally, when we're looking for a water leak or any sort of water losses, we'll isolate and, and watch the pressure. Yeah, right. and watch the pressure and see where where that changes. Okay. Well, I read it. I was just curious. Yeah, I think the reference is probably separating from the distribution within the network to which the world is flying in and around, right? Any other questions, though? Beach, uh, under buy more, it just says that there's uh, still working on some cleanup. Picked up some scrap iron fittings, clay piles were hauled away. I'm just kind of wondering, is that part of the contract that when they take on these uh, replacements, that they clean it up, or is that put onto our forces? Uh, typically, it'll be part of the contract, but when there's areas um, where we can do it ourselves to save money, we will. It's not included in the contract itself. I think probably all of that stuff would be um in the contract itself um it would be at contract time that we would negotiate and say well yeah we'll take this or that but um for the pipe and fittings we don't typically tend to keep a stock of that stuff um so it would be the the contractor doing that i think the other part that really bothers me is on these is say like when generally when you just put in a water line it's going to be under a roadway 
I've never seen any specs saying, okay, how they're putting it back, whether the pipe is bedded, the valves are bedded in uh, screened rock, washed rock, or how it's compacted back in. And I'm afraid that it could lead up to say, like with our public works, if something ever fails in time, especially after we've got it paved, I would like to see a little bit more specs put into something like that. For sure. What we'd normally rely on if we don't have specification ourselves is the Red Deer County specifications. Much of our um, requirements fall into that, and I'll double check to make sure our contracting tenders are requiring that. I just don't want to throw them back in those, and we've got a super, yeah. and then we have to do it again. Please, please, and thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? How many pages do we have to go to? I don't know how many pages if you... One, are we as far as 149? Um, um, should be under 137. 137 back? Yeah. I don't have anything more. What's that? I don't have anything more from right there to the 137. Uh, yeah. question? Just a comment that I'd like to highlight to the public. Uh, the Stedler Wellness Committee and their block party trailer. Uh, I don't think enough of the public actually knows about the existence, so I just wanted to highlight that one item. What page is that? Uh, so you want to be a party animal? Is that what you're saying? I, I just, if, if this exists, I would like the public to know about it. Right below it is the pictures of the schools. I was asking Councilor Stewart to look at today if they were still on there. Yeah, like, of course, I know what Quantum Coach is and I know where ASD site is, but that doesn't look like ASD school to me. <laughs> but... Don't you remember going to school there? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I drove by it lots of times and it had, um, I thought, well, oh, right, it's on. I thought ASD school had the former little uh, bell tower on it. Yes, I can speak to a couple things there. Um, yeah, so as the school moved from its original location to just south of the Stewart Farm, um, so that's where I got the only thing that doesn't look like a granary is a little stack that comes out at the top. Um, also, the block party trailer does exist. Um, we're just continuing with the Southern Wellness to um, fill it up with uh, different uh, materials and programs and information and we will be um, putting that out there uh, more information on that probably in the new year with the Stoutler Wildness Committee that was part of the um, $25,000 initiative grant we got a couple of years ago and I do sit on that committee on behalf of the county of Stoutler so um, the block party information the whole trailer um, will be putting forth a lot more information in the new year. Thank you Lorraine. Any other questions? Seeing none, we have a motion to accept from Councilor Grover. All in favor? Favor. Carried. Uh, financial reports 11.212223 and 24. Mr. Chairman, do we have a delegation at 130? Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes. Yes. We have a people. They're waiting way out in. Way, way out? Okay. I saw there was nobody there. I thought we were. <laughs> I thought I seen somebody once, but maybe yeah. I was mistaken. We have three individuals. One very young. Oh, individual. okay. Yeah. This is one of our younger county residents. <laughs> this is one that won't argue with us, so. <laughs> Might call it the opinion, but. <laughs> Okay, hey, we have our 130 delegation, uh, which is Stellar FCSS. Shall we want? We can either go from there or from the. Uh, from the either. Where would you like to go from right here? Where would you like to go from here? I'll just turn that light on. Okay, and we'll do introductions first, Shelly. Starting with Andrew. And Bridget, Director of Director of Municipal Services. Angel Darson, Director of Communications. James Niver, Carson South Warden. Laura Stilberg, by Morandia. Justin Stevens, Erskine Buffalo Lake. Ruby. 
Gabe Norton, Big Valley. Ernie Chapter Supper. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Ann Kelly Walker. I'm the executive director of the Thank you very much for having me. You want to speak into the mic? Yeah, get up close so we can hear you. Is it a remote forward or backwards? Do you need a hand, Jalaja? Pardon? Do you need a hand? No. Well, she's she's a pro with this, trust me. I've been through our board meetings and she's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> This is the best baby I've ever seen in my life. Most part. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for having us today. We are just going to kind of go through our budget presentation with you guys. So, there we go. All right. So, FCSS brings a whole bunch of different, I guess, attributes to our community. We have a whole bunch of different services that provide, um, I'm not very good at this, I guess, uh, <laughs> um, that provide a whole bunch of supports to our communities. All right. Um, we do a whole bunch of outreach programs to different communities. Some of the ones that we wanted to highlight were Seniors Week, some of our hygiene bags, um, the CARS program, <coughs> Central Alberta Resilient Students is that program. Uh, our volunteer tax program, which helps many people in our community, uh, CRA outreach, and some harm reduction. Um, SCSS is also currently working on three different grants to bring more economic recovery from COVID-19 to our community. Here are some events that we've done so far this year. Some family days, scavenger hunts, and different community activities. There we go. Um, some of our programs that we like to provide are grief and loss programs and some smart recovery. All right, here's some more information on some. Um, we have the community helpers along with in the know. Thank you. These are both workshops that just ran recently in November. Um, we had participants from the community both online and in person. They were really well received and we're hoping that over the next year we can bring them back into the community for some more people to be engaged in. Um, we also contribute to the Rural Mental Health Program. Um, yeah, we're also in November, we're going to bring back the future. What's that one? Oh no, that was this. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, up. those are my notes, my scribble notes. Sorry, Jamie. That's okay. Yeah, these are just All right, so we've also done some overdose awareness days, some volunteer appreciation days. Uh, we participate with tools for schools and the summer fun day. All right, some community partnerships. We partner with a whole bunch of different community aspects in town and in the county. Um, some of the ones that I want to highlight off of this list here are the food bank, home support, helpline, and our um, Stetler Hamper Society. Yeah. Just step forward a little bit. It's... All right, I'll start talking about the budget. Um, our budget is presented there you go. for 2021 <laughs> and also for our 2022, as you can see. Um, some key highlight points that I want to add to this is within our budget, we get 122 thousand dollars just over that we put directly back into our community so that is funding that we have received that we give back directly to different programs different resources and other things that are needed in the community um, another key note is also we had learned from the association i guess it would be conference this past 
that SDSS has proven to be $1 spent to $13 saved to the Alberta government. And our statistics. All right, so far this year we have gone and we have helped over 45,000 clients in Stetler and community area um, with different needs. I'm going to highlight some different aspects of this, and that is when we had our major COVID crisis, a lot of these people were coming to us because they couldn't access different government programs. They couldn't get into figure out how to access um, either EI or some of the COVID grants that were going out. And so some of this numbers directly relates to other programs being closed in our community. All right, that's, really that's it. That's all. Mostly the objective is for the new councillors this year to uh, understand some of what we do. So we'd like to open the floor so you can ask questions if you have any questions about what we can or cannot do, some of our mandates, things like that. Questions? I'll get the ball rolling. Uh, could you uh, maybe let our council know some of the target uh, for the smart smart recovery program and in the no program, what those programs do, who they target? Mm -hmm. The in the no program is more for um, rural Alberta. It is brought to the communities for farmers to be able to talk about mental health issues, stress, finances, all those things. Um, we're hoping in the spring to work with G3 to maybe have a public, I got the right number this time, James, um, have a public barbecue to get people engaged and uh, make things more open And when we're talking about it. The Smart Recovery Program is for people who are in the process of um, recovery or some are already recovered, some are not. It's just a come and go group that we hold once a week on Thursday evenings at the office um, for people struggling with addiction and it's part of our harm reduction outreach program. Uh, other questions? So, and I, I think we need to highlight the fact that during COVID, um, this particular organization was virtually the only one that was open when it came to government programs. So we had Alberta Works and the Canadian Employment who both were phoning in and saying, or you could phone in and they would say, call you back. Many of the individuals that um, this organization helps, they may not have a phone. Um, they, in some cases, they waited around the office to see if they could get a return phone call and they stayed open. They stayed open like troopers through this. And I tell you what, they they deserve a big thank you for that. Yeah, the three to five business days. So if you are applying for income support, um, they'll tell you that they'll call you back in three to five business days. Like James said, a lot of our clients don't have phones. If they do, they only operate on Wi-Fi. Um, and so many people fell through the cracks. They really did. Um, it was It was hard to watch because people were struggling and really frustrated so um, and we weren't yet you know, there was other organizations in town that certainly stepped up and helped out too so it's always good that we can all work together and try to make sure that the community has the services they need and your christmas hamper again this year is through help with echo employees again is that how's that how's that co usually steps up and helps with delivery and all those things volunteers work at the hall to pack the toys and the food um, the applications are still coming in until Friday. I think as of this morning, we had about 126 applications town and county. So, yeah. It's a very busy time of year. It's very busy. Yes, very busy right now. So. What's the norm for Christmas hamper? Um, Christmas hampers can average anywhere from one to, I think our highest year was 156. Yeah. So, so it, it can get, lot. yeah. But uh, typically, a, a bulk of the applications come in on the last day. Like they really, they, the numbers will likely be up there again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, um, Friday is the last day, so the tenth. Whatever reason, people wait till that last day and come pouring in. So. It sounds like almost like tax deadline. <laughs> the county. Yeah, I think that um, 
sometimes it's hard, especially this year, you know, to wrap your head around the fact that it's almost Christmas when there's no snow on the ground. The tent seems early for people, so they're not planning that far ahead. So I think when the cutoff comes, then they're under the gun. When's the cutoff for donations? Um, we'll take donations right up to the last day for sure. Um, they do like to get them before the packing happens on the 22nd, though, so, or the 21st, sorry. Okay. They go out on the 22nd. So like you're saying the last day is the 20. Second, they think. Well, I say the twenty first because they'll pick everything up last minute on the twenty first. Yeah. One other thing, if I could, Mr. Chairman, um, kind of highlight too. Part of the organization is that um, the the ladies have uh, volunteered at the uh, food bank, and what they did was they volunteered to open up the food bank at a different time of day. Typically, the food bank only works business hours. And part of your employment um, with the FCSS is you are voluntold to um, <laughs> come out to certain events, and this happens to be one that they have really uh, highlighted on. And when Jalisha said the food bank is one of our key, it is. It's a it is a big issue for us, and this isn't done for any other reason that these ladies really truly believe in our community, and they do a, a great job. So. Yeah, we work on Wednesday nights just so that people who work can access the food bank after hours. So, how does the supply of the food bank look? Fabulous. Yeah, it's been really good. The support from the community is great. So, good. yeah. I'd like to share uh, last when I was in the office for the conference, uh, there was a group of uh, grief and loss that were there that day because there was a wind up break for their lunch or whatever. And one of the ladies told me that she was wishing that that. that particular session hadn't ended because I guess she was probably appreciating that and depending on the support that grief and loss was given her because she had lost her husband. Mm -hmm. so that's another program that runs through FCSS. Yeah. And we do that one on one too. It's not just a group, but There's two options, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to point out one thing for our new counselors is the funding model. Uh, FCSS is coming actually asking for funds. Uh, because of the mandate, uh, if a community wants to FCSS, the province will fund it on the um, uh, rule or whatever that the municipalities put in 20% minimum. And of course, the town and the county do put in their 20% minimum, but there are lots of municipalities who go above and beyond the minimum in the Alberta that uh, put uh, more than that in. But uh, uh, Stellar FCSS has never requested more and they, they go out and hustle their own grants. And they uh, earn income, try to earn income through uh, counseling fees for those who can afford it. And uh, they uh, link, uh, lease out office space to others in their building and, and try to earn some funds that way. And plus the, uh, the other grants they go for. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, and have yeah, a great day. Guys. Can't grill you. Come on. We'll harder questions next time. Next time. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. And sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a council meeting to put a guy to sleep. <laughs> I wonder if I could somebody check the front and make sure that we're not going to two o'clock. Or two o'clock is fine. I'm joining the base soon. Oh, by Zoom too? Okay. Yeah, I'm sure they're not out there, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Super. Okay, back to um, the financial reports. Accounts payable register to year to date budget reports, page 137 to 159 of our package. Questions on that? Mr. Dander? 149. <clears throat> Is Stetler Fire it says the salaries and benefits to the Stetler Fire are like period, like there's, there's no balance there. We're not paying them. Okay. Yeah, the zero on salary and benefits would mean that in this month there was no payment issued. That could just be uh, that the reporting hasn't come in from the department for us to do payment based off of. And we know how. Yes, they are. We used to get the reports from the town settler. We get four months at a shot. Okay. Say three times here. So it's only updated every quarter, then basically. Probably. Yeah. 
was on page 151, uh, 25210, it'd be the fuel and oil. No response from there. On the fire? Yes, for the Bymore Fire Department. So they used no fuel or anything this year? We had tanks that are filled up, and so they record it when the some tanks are filled up. If they're not filled up, then they don't record it. Page 152. Also, I think they're taking it from the public works. Number 22682 in the expense on for the transportation. I guess it's not really here, but it's in the contractors. Uh, 22682. Yeah. The contractor side. Yeah, no. You authorized more than what the grant was to finish the entire seven months. Mm -hmm. Not shown in the check registry through Larmer. On the uh, Botha disillusion. Okay, so like it's. Where, 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 yeah, yeah. Orange. Same page, 152. Botha and Gatsby disillusions. I like guess. Uh, that's the payment that went into Botha, so that was the final payment that we did going down around the water plant in Botha. And then that was the road that got ripped up when the village was still in existence and um, the rate pairs. We promised the, the residents out there that the first opportunity that we had, um, that we would work the dissolution funds to get their road fixed. It's more for city thing. Justin and Paul, then it's the money that we had gotten that we took them over. We spent so much money in there. Um, on page 154, the Buffalo View maintenance, is that just for the water? Buffalo View maintenance would probably be on the, it's 41, yeah. Yeah. That's just for the water hauled in? The bu no, Buffalo View maintenance is work done. That's not everything but water. Okay, so that's, um, a that's maintenance that they did to find the water leak? Yeah, that's primarily what that one would be. Ottawa. Signed another check into it. It's going to be even more Ottawa. Ready for more? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Last one I have is on page 157. Here's the rural de number one center B revenue for planning and development, the rural development fund 14706. Did we, uh, for the period balance, did we actually make that amount? 46,700. We had a couple of subdivisions where, where you guys didn't back off on our old development fee. I think we had a couple of them come in. Mm -hmm. Can you look it up, Sandy? Yeah. And right down at the very bottom, the rural development, uh, 30,000, that's what we paid out. Yes, that would be a donation to STARS. The G, um, I don't know if we put the new aerials there or not. Okay. Oh, yeah. That would go through on capital, but then it would be offset yeah. as a transfer from reserves. But the donation to STARS and a few other ones that we've done will come right out of the world belt. Because we donated, what, 12 to? Yeah, yeah. just over 12 to some. Mm -hmm. Did you get come up with it? Just bring it up. Sorry, I just sent the wall. Quick. Is Groovy joking? Yeah. Someone yeah. throttling him? <laughs> That's all my questions. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Please. So, so this information. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Favor. Carried. And we're at 152. So the next uh, thing on the list is 11.3 counselor fee sheets, page 160 of the package. I forgot a meeting of yours, James. I had it on my calendar and we were trying to get these out because we were in Edmonton and I forgot to. Uh, I forgot one and you forgot one? Yeah. Sorry. Which one was that? That was the one from October, I think. Well, was that the one you corrected on me? Did I correct it? Yeah, then that would be Andrew because he's more on the ball than I am. Um, I do have a quick question about these. Yeah. 
I may be able to. Oh, there it is. Yeah. This here. That's the one you're, sorry, yeah. Justin, is that the one you're talking about? That's the one. Yeah. Sorry. I must have grabbed it. So. Thank you. Uh, so I was under the understanding that we were handing in these before the end of the month. So I kind of treated that as cut off and didn't include, for example, RMA because- You miss out on it. You're donating. So uh, what, which are just we- Just put it on your next month. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Need that <laughs> just for consistency, do you want me to estimate the ones that are scheduled? Yes. And, okay. And then do a correction at the end of something. Especially with yeah. December coming up, I want you to estimate right to the end of the year. Okay. Fair enough. If it doesn't have just we just readjust. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Gary, I was just kinda of wondering, okay, like in the past, like I look back on an old sheet of mine when I went to the RMA and I've clocked it at four oh five. This time here, like I remember it being just slightly over four hundred, I put down four ten, but like you're sitting at three sixty and you're further away than what I am. I just punched it on my phone. Well, I don't I don't know. I didn't even look at the odometer to be honest. So. Like I look back on mine, say like from two years ago when I had four. I guess I had to look at my odometer next time. But I just didn't do that on the phone. I think you might be short about uh, 60 or 70 clicks in there. I'll take another one for me. Thank you. Okay. I also think it depends on which route you take. If you go up highway 2 or you go down Rosemont, it's going to be different. Any other good, any questions on them? Yeah, move them, Councilor Gender. All in favor? Favor. Carried. So we'll call them. I know we just, uh, our two o'clock delegation just uh, logged into Zoom. Okay. We wanted to move to. Yes, we can move to the two o'clock delegation. Do you have any answer to the rural development? Uh, yeah, I've got called stuff, Meston, and what was the last one? Sorry. Thompson. Those were our three October. Ones and the all stuff one was a pretty good size one, though. Yeah. Quite a bit. Okay. So, our, it's Andrew. Yeah. Our two o'clock uh, delegation is Apex Utilities, Shane Miller, free Apex in your community. Can you hear us? Shane? I can. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, we'll do a quick introduction around the room so you know who you're talking to. Start okay. With, starting with Andrew. Andrew, Director of Municipal Services. Thank you, Dorsetson, Director of Communications. Uh, James Heiberg, Gerskin South Warden Counselor. Les Stilbert, By Morandian Counselor. Justin Stevens, Erskine Buffalo Lake. Dave Grover, Big Valley. Oh, hey, Denaldo Rainbow. Ernie Gender, Center. You get Cassidy CEO. Marlon. And Larry Clark, uh, Gasby Botha, and Reeve. Go ahead, Shane. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Good to see everybody. Uh, my name is Shane Milner. I'm uh, the regional manager for Apex Utilities uh, for Southern Alberta. Um, the reason for my visit today is just just introduce myself and um, explain a little bit about uh, where we're moving in the future and a little bit about the uh, the name change that you're you're obviously aware of a um, little bit about how that how that came about and uh, what it what it means not only for us but uh, maybe for maybe for the communities that we serve. So in the in the south part of the province, um, we serve the communities of Drumheller, Stetler in the rural area, Hannah, Three Hills, Pincher Creek, and rural Medicine Hat. Our mission is to be the clean and reliable energy provider of choice through being a leader in safety, cost effectiveness, and customer service. Some of our core values, safety of our customers, our communities and our employees is the top priority of our company. We succeed together because we work hard and are good at what we do. And we connect across our teams and we respect each other. We strive for clear, transparent communication to our customers, employees, regulators, shareholders, 
and all of our stakeholders, which includes the municipalities that we serve. We provide low carbon energy solutions to our customers and always look for ways to minimize our environmental footprint. So a little bit about the change in our, uh, in our, our logos and our names and trucks. Of course, we used to be Alta Gas Utilities. Uh, we were owned by a parent company that was Alta Gas Services, mainly an oil field company. Um, they have since, we've been since sold and we were purchased basically by a company called Tri-Summit Utilities. Tri-Summit is a, is a Canadian corporation. It's headquartered in Calgary. And um, it, it's uh, got a bunch of diversified rate regulated natural gas distribution utilities and long-term contracted renewable power generation assets. So TSU's two business segments are comprised of utilities that deliver affordable and reliable natural gas to end users in Alberta and British Columbia, and also Nova Scotia. TSU also owns a one-third equity interest in the utility that delivers gas to Inuvik in the Northwest Territories. On the other side of the coin, our renewable energy, which, re, which includes 100% interest in a 102 megawatt Bear Mountain Wind Park, and approximately 10% interest in the 303 megawatt Northwest Hydro facility in British Columbia. So we've branched out into the area of, uh, of wind power as well. Now, Tri-Summit Utilities is actually indirectly owned by two large Canadian public investment managers. The Public Sector Pension Investment Board, or PSP, is one of, the, one of Canada's largest pension investment managers. Uh, it was established in 1999, and they, um, they have net contributions to the pension funds of the Federal Public Service, the Canadian Forces, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and the Reserve Force. The other half of that company is uh, based in Edmonton, their Alberta Investment Management Corporation, AIMCO. They manage one of Canada's largest public pools of funds uh, that invest globally on behalf of 32 pension, endowment and government funds in the province of Alberta. So that, that just means that uh, instead of being publicly traded now, we're privately owned once again. And uh, it, it lends itself to give us a little more leeway in some of the uh, some of the ways that we can do and work system betterment. Some of our operations procedures change a little bit because we're not publicly traded anymore. It just uh, I think it it just allows us to be uh, you know better equipped and prepared to be able to respond to the needs of the communities. So one of the things that we're also doing is looking for cleaner energy. And we know that cleaner energy will define the future. And we're going to be part of that and we're going to help bring that future to life. Our commitment is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2030. And of course, help Canada and the world transition to a low carbon energy system. We're looking to replace equipment and adopt new technologies to reduce or avoid emissions throughout our pipeline assets distribution system and maintenance and operation processes. It just means that equipment that would sometimes release uh, gas at, at intervals or at very, very low flows is being replaced with, with uh, equipment that doesn't do that. We want to pursue opportunities to invest in low or zero carbon energy. Uh, we're, we are looking at uh, introducing renewable natural gas and hydrogen into the piping systems in the future and we also want to develop or invest in projects that can generate renewable energy credits or carbon offsets and so guys that's and ladies and gentlemen that's basically it for me i just wanted to introduce myself tell you a little bit about what's happening with us and uh, if anybody has any questions any easy questions i would be happy to answer them councilman eiberg has his hand up okay so Shane, okay. um, I have a rate payer that is being charged a um, franchise fee for the municipality. This individual is um, definitely knows whether or not where you receive the franchise fee. Can you give us a little bit of what's going on there? 
Okay, well, I'm personally not familiar with that, but let me, can you say that again? So it's a franchise fee that they are charging on their bill. And typically the franchise fee, as much as I know about it, is that you would collect a franchise fee and then give it to the municipality. Um, Correct. And then um, pass that on. So we've never received the money. So we're looking maybe for some millions of dollars in back tax set. <laughs> sure this one one individual hasn't paid millions of dollars but she would definitely like to see this cleared up okay so she sees the franchise fee on her bill yes and wonders where it goes no she doesn't wonder where it goes we know we don't have oh. a franchise agreement so. we know we don't have a franchise agreement and she knows that she's not receiving it at the county okay okay so Stetler County does not have a franchise agreement. That's what you're you're saying? Not to our knowledge. Yet. And if it is, okay. we're not receiving any money from it. So Okay. But one of our customers that we write we quite like a lot, she yep. is being charged this amount. Okay. Okay, that is something I will look into and, and I can, will and you can get back to our I'll CEO, Yvette Cassidy, with the answer on that. Please and thank okay. you. Absolutely, I will. Thank you for that. Any other questions for Shane? Shane, how many uh, operators do you have out in our area? In in the Stetler area, we have three technicians. However, um, Stetler is actually included in our Drumheller district, so we have a technician in Three Hills and one in Hannah and, a, and, a, and two in Drumheller that also um, will be in the area if, if required. Well, that's good. We just, that's good to have people employed in our community and we appreciate that. Yeah, we do have a, we do have a, an office in, in Stetler. Um, and like I say, there's three permanent employees out of the Stetler area. And then we do have, again, employees in the surrounding area and, if if ever needed. <laughs> there you go. Good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. I don't see any other questions, Shane. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I uh, certainly appreciate it, and I uh, I will I will get on that question and get back to the uh, to the CAO on on the result. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye bye. So you should get an answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Council committee reports. Um, I just I guess one question before that. Our next delegation are they? We're two thirty and they'll be in. So they'll be in person? Okay. Oh, two of six right now. Yeah, we were early and quick with that one. So. Where are we at, Mr. Chairman? We are at 11.4, Councillor Committee Reports. 11.41 Museum is Councillor Stevens. 11.42 uh, is FCSS, Councillor Nyberg and Stilberg. And 11.43 is Stetler Public Library for Councillor Stilberg. If there's no questions or concerns, I will move those. Okay. Any questions or concerns on the reports, Councillor Gunner? From the FCSS, it says that uh, there's they favor only seven communities. Say that again. We're not. Where it says that favors only seven communities. Like I'm just going to one clarification on like this funding is it only shared between the, the seven of them? I got to get the, back to the content. So I, okay, it's the fourth fourth paragraph down where it says equitable access to funding for rural and remote housing and homeless resources. Oh yeah. Uh, so it, so the problem is when they talked about it was the seven communities were. It's it's not the way the program is set up. It doesn't actually help rural Alberta. It it only um, it's it's based for 
the Rubens, as you would call it. So the, the Red Deers, the Lethbridge, the Grand Prairies, um, the way that the, that whole um, rollout of that funding doesn't support the true ur ur rules like us. So um, we're um, when we try to make application for this funding, um, we're kind of out of, out on the left field of it because it's not. There's a certain criteria that we just don't meet, right? The thunder would not be included in there. No, it's a red. The seven, and I don't quote me, but seven are Red Deer, Grand Prairie, Lethbridge, um, Medicine Hat, um, Cam Cam yeah, Camrose was one of them. It basically it was your mid-sized cities, right? So we're just left out in the dark. Well, yeah, we're advocating to say, listen. You rule. You you rolled out a rural funding program for affordable housing, but it hasn't helped us because we can't. We just we just don't make the criteria, right? So, False advertising. Yeah. This is rural funding when rural's the true rural's can't access. If we had a huge homeless population or a huge huge uh, affordable housing crisis, it, yeah, we would we might be able to do it. We we need a. We just need a little bit of help, but the way they've got it set it up, they're only helping those ones that need it. It almost seems like we are being um, chastised if you can support it yourself. Yep. You, you don't get the help. That's pretty much exactly how you're looking at. Yep. And still, it does have a homeless problem. I mean, not to a grand scale, but it does. You know, I can recall one case where uh, this lady was homeless. I don't know where she came in from, but she was homeless and she was here and um, and she wouldn't come into the office. She just did it all over the phone. She was sort of scared to be in places like that. But anyways, so the Stellar FCSS, even though they, we don't have a, a homeless program, they offered to put her up in a hotel in, in Stellar until um, transportation could be arranged to Red Deer. So they got the hotel, and then the next morning, the credit union across the street phoned and said she slept in the foyer of their credit union. <laughs> so, you know. And I'll, I'll tell you, so to give you the, the, the crutch of what these gals do in that particular situation, they finally arranged to meet her, and they actually drove her themselves to, uh, there was a women's shelter in Red Deer that they actually got her into. So uh, when we talk about what these ladies do, I, I sometimes... In our reports, we cannot truly give you the depth that they will do to help somebody. They are not doing this for, they're not doing it for the money or the glory or any of that. They are doing it strictly to help people and they take it very seriously. And they, they ended up, two of them got in their own personal vehicle and drove this individual over to to uh, the Red Deer Women's Shelter. So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that these people are doing. We're not. Yeah, like I said, they're not doing it for the glory and they're not doing it for, they're definitely not doing it for the money. Yeah, and I want to give you a quick more example because I think we got a little bit of time today. Um, is um, when a young man came into the office, um, he'd been beaten and he no longer was a happy camper. <laughs> here in Stettler, and it wasn't Stettler, it was 601. Uh, he was no longer a happy camper here and he wanted to go home in homeless Ontario. So our staff, drove that young man to Red Deer so he could get him and paid for a one-way ticket to get him to somewhere. I don't know if the ticket was probably to Calgary or wherever so he could make connections to get home to Ontario. But I mean, it's just not everybody. It just takes these strangers in their car and takes them somewhere. So they do go above and beyond to help. And then report one through four. Did you have another comment, Councilor Grover? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank the bear wolf. Okay. okay, any other comments? Comments for my gender? Like I'm just noticing that all, all these uh, correspondence, like everyone signs it, puts a name to it. So like, I would appreciate seeing like, everyone that does make we're not, a course. We're not in consent the gentleman. Okay. Okay. Sorry, next one. Comments for committee reports. I sign. I don't sign. Would you like me to sign them, okay. Mr. Gender? You betcha. Your autographing time is going to be. No. <laughs> okay. So, I um, can't actually make that happen. We have a motion on the table to to accept these for information. All in favor? 
Favor? Carry. Power, consent, uh, agenda items 12.1 uh, to 12.11. So you've got a comment on that, Councilor Gender? I think Mr. Gender is going to keep that comment for later. Yeah. 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 So um, we've got letters from Rick McGyver, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Damien Couric, Battle River Crowfoot, Jason Kenny, Nate Horner, and a uh, letter from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. So and we've got some invitations, but do you want to accept these just as information or Councillor Nybert? Um, the only one that I would like to state out of there is probably STARS, right? Um, everybody else is... Um, so with the STARS one, typically, is this a letter for support or is this a letter for... Is this a letter to thank it for the support? Okay, I just can't remember. What, do they come in and do a presentation to us at which time we give them the money? Yeah. Right, they gave, uh, they gave me an uh, email the other day and they would like to do a Zoom presentation. Um, probably January, February. Yeah. Okay, so receive for information, Mr. Chairman. From, from 12.1 to 12.11. That is correct. Okay. Any other questions on them? Councillor McKay? Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll we've got this motion on the table. Uh, all in favor? Favor. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? I just had an update on, um, we wrote a letter to CP Rail. Yes. And uh, Mr. Damien Kirk's office has contacted uh, county administration and offered to um, speak to the CP rail minister on our behalf. So I've asked them to please go ahead and do that and uh, just waiting to hear back. Good, thank you. Maybe we'll see something happen there. Hey, come on in. Are you? Okay, you got you. Yo, we're doing it from the podium. Yeah, yeah, yeah here you are. Ready to go. If you're ready, we're ready. Right. Go ahead. Uh, you can both the back door to Jeff and Jack's. Go spook. Go spook. I'm missing my swamper, guys. If you want to wait, you can. I don't know if we have much else. Um, you don't have much else? We're just. You could tell us some jokes, maybe, I guess, to kill time or go ahead with your presentation. Yeah. Uh, we'll take those two. Okay, we'll do some introductions just so you. Yeah. Okay, Sir Lander. Andrew Rushick, Director of Municipal Services. Thank you, Thorson, Director of Communications. James Nyberg, Erskine South Warden Councillor. Good afternoon, Les Stilbert, Barmer Indian Councillor. Justin Stevens, Erskine Buffalo Lake. Dave Grover, Big Valley Councillor. Paul McKay, Denali Red Wolf. Ernie Gender, good afternoon. <laughs> and Larry Clark, three. Nice to meet you all. My name is Janelle Robinson. We had a couple other people who are going to be coming, so don't mind if they do come in. Certainly, yeah. and like, like you said, if you need to wait or we could recess till yeah. two thirty if you would like to do that. That's... Yeah, we just have a couple. Yeah. Okay, well let's do that. Yeah. We we came straight out of the barn. Okay, okay. fair enough. I think I don't think we have anything else. Actually, you know what? No, we could. Why don't we? Our in camera is very short, so why don't we quickly go into camera? We'll just ask you guys to sit outside, and then we'll um, we'll do that. And and there, oh, there's there's point where the coffee is served. They want coffee or shop or anything. Janelle, since you have ten minutes to kill, there's a rabbit that's been hanging out in the front parking lot for about three days. If you could catch it, it's yours. No, 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 that's, that's the county mascot. Hey, it is a rabbit alone. He's been there for a long time.
Any chairs will be here. I got to be able to run as quick as I can. We have lots of time to sit down a little bit. You know. So I think we we probably need the uh, introduction to Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start with Andrew, and we'll... Andrew, Director of Municipal Services. Mickey Communications. My name is Niver Gerskin, South Warden Counselor. Les Dilbert, Counselor for Bymore and Dang. Justin Stevens, Erskin Buffalo Lake. David Brewer, Big Valley Counselor. Paul McKay, you know the Red Wolf. Ernie Gender, good afternoon, everyone. Is that Cassidy, CAO? Morning, Cass, executive. Larry Clark, Bobby Gaddis, Junior Counselor, Lee. And now, if you want to introduce your people, or are they going to introduce your people? My people. 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 My Right. How can I not? I'm Janelle Robinson, founder of Spirits Respite Ranch. What's your name? Amanda. This is Amanda. Yeah. Um, it's well, some of those names you're going to recognize if you guys had a chance to read the testimonials that I sent. Um, a lot of the testimonials came from my people. <laughs> all right, guys. Before I begin, I would like to read to you all the definition of respite. Respite, a short period of relief from something difficult or unpleasant. Now, many people ask me, what does respite mean? In the world of special needs parenting, this is a common term. It's what the government agencies tell us we need to do for ourselves, what we need to hire to ensure we can be the best parent we can be for our child with extra needs. The problem is the respite programs and aid available, especially in our area, is severely lacking. To access programming such as specialized learning programs, extracurricular groups, sports and life skills and work opportunity projects, families like ours travel to the cities. All the way to Red Deer, right? Amanda Bowles in Red Deer. What else do you do in Red Deer? Swim sometimes? Yes, swimming in Red Deer. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. For the two and a half years, I traveled to Red Deer five days a week so that our son could participate in all of these types of programs. This was not easy on our family or finances, and we are aware that the time commitment and cost is what prohibits the vast majority of families from accessing the services that are available but too far away. Like all parents, we wanted to do everything in our power to get our child the best supports possible. People ask us also all the time, why did you start this? As I've mentioned before, we have a son with special needs. Dax is almost seven years old. Dax has severe autism, is nonverbal, has developmental delays and motor skill delays. He is the reason we are doing what we are, but our drive doesn't stop there. Obviously from my people back there. <laughs> we also have a daughter, Tova, who is 11. She is the typically developing child, preteen attitude and all. My husband, Kent and I were both born and raised in this county. He and Gadsby and I at Buffalo Lake. We've been together for 23 years and have been county landowners for the last 15. We left the area after high school but quickly came back. We love calling Stetler County our home. We love to contribute and volunteer where we can to help better our region and we're raised to get in there and make it happen if something needs to be done. That being said, after seeing how lacking the services for special needs individuals and their families are in both the town and county, we decided to do something about it. We have the same dream for our kids that all parents do. I bet for them to be happy, right? To feel fulfilled, to have a purpose that makes them smile, to be safe, to be loved. For our daughter, like most other parents, we plan to prepare her for 18 years the best we can and then watch her create a life where she chooses, hopefully doing something that makes her spirit feel at peace. When you have a child with severe needs, your life plan looks different. We know that Dax will live with us forever. He will not drive away after graduation to discover himself in the world. He will need us to keep him safe. Ooh. 
to provide constant supervision, support, and love. We have been dealt a different hand than most in the parenting department. And you know what? It's okay. You know what else? There's a lot of other families like us in the county. Families like us need connection, support, and to feel that they belong. The world is incredibly difficult when you have a family member who doesn't have the abilities to fit in in a typical society. Going for groceries, making friends, enjoying a movie, joining a team, learning to cook, all things that require extra support to be in place when you factor in a special needs child. So our why is this, to help facilitate a supportive community not only for our son Dax as he grows older, but for all other families like us. Did you know that there is nowhere indoors in town right now for an aide to take their child or adult client so that they can sit at a table with their bag lunch? All public tables have been removed due to COVID restrictions. So our, our vulnerable members of society who already feel ostracized are even more removed from the public. We tell them our doors are open for them. Bring your loved ones and come to our table. Did you also know the only organized activity for adults with special needs in our whole area is bowling for two hours on a Thursday? That's it. No other programming unless a family has the means to drive to Red Deer and pay privately. We are providing a space for opportunities that these individuals would not get otherwise. To use animals as a way of connecting with kids who have difficulties connecting with others. To show those with special needs that they are capable, that they are supported, that they belong, that they have value, and that they are loved beyond measure. To feel no judgment, a place for families to meet others like them, to grow friendships and support networks, a place for parents and caregivers to rest, even if just for half an hour while we ride horses with their loved ones or feed the chickens or just walk in the trees. Right, Missy? Our community needs a place like this. That's why Spirits Respite Ranch was born. People want to know, what do you do out at the ranch? Guys, we have so much fun. I truly hope that all of you will visit us one day to see in person the smiles that we get to see every day. Ernie told me that while on the campaign trail this fall, his favorite day was when he met a little girl from the Both area. She is six years old and has Down syndrome. He had never met her before and she ran into his arms for a huge hug and would not let go. These are the views that we get every day. We witness the pure love of children and adults who come with no hidden agenda, no drama, just open hearts. We horseback ride, we groom horses, we play games, sometimes on horseback, sometimes on the ground. Some of the games involve working on math skills, right? Boo. <laughs> Balance or executive functioning. We let the family tell us what they would like incorporated into the riding sessions and do our best to follow the child's therapy plan and goals. We work together in the barn to learn how to care for all the animals that live here at the ranch. When visiting, some of our kids go to the barn first to make sure that there's fresh water and feed. Looking after our animals is very important and we ask all of our kiddos learn what they can and we do it together. Their sense of pride and accomplishment when telling or showing their parents or aides that they have fed and watered their horse after riding is something beautiful to see. Being included in the process of running the ranch shows them that they are valued and helps to teach responsibility. Some of our clients come out just to do their chores with their respite aids. With older kids and adults, we fix fence together. We work on various building projects. Learning how to use power tools is always a hit. Sometimes Smitty teaches them to run the tractor. Right, Owen? <laughs> when restrictions allow, we host local senior homes in at the arena for visits with horses, visits with each other, and good old outdoor animal therapy. We host open houses that draw families from all over Alberta. Our last one attracted almost 400 people in one day. Craft days, Halloween parties, inclusive gym cannas, horse-drawn wagon rides, and Christmas parties are all events that we have hosted recently. We are partnered with the high school to provide work experience for their students with learning challenges. And we are also working with the elementary school to facilitate our ranch being used as a break space for their students who are struggling. The inclusive community that we are building doesn't just stop at our gates. 
We also facilitate young adults finding work in the community with other accepting and open-hearted people. Sometimes that's learning to build log cabins with a local handyman. Sometimes that's helping with tap checks and holding horses for our 4-H groups that visit regularly. Some are paying gigs, some are volunteer. All matter immensely. We have local artisans come and teach us different skills like leatherwork, archery, beading and more. We also have a farrier that comes, volunteers his time to teach our kids all about horse hoof health. Right? And who holds the horses when Kelly comes? Mm -hmm. That's right. We host weekly roping nights where they can learn from the real live cowboys who bring their horses, ropes, and volunteer their time to teach. Seeing the family members relax into the accepting atmosphere inside our arena and enjoy seeing their child learn a new skill while being truly accepted makes our hearts burst with joy. There is another side of society that benefits the work the volunteers do here. At the arena, we host many families with typical children who visit for 4-H events, horseback riding lessons, and volunteer opportunities. As a couple of your county office employees can attest to, the kids who volunteer and ride here are learning a heck of a lot about what true inclusion looks like, kindness to others who are different, and how to create an accepting world for others less fortunate than them. All of this adds to the makings of some pretty amazing young adults who will help create a kinder world. Finally, the who of Spirits Respite Ranch. While Kent and I donate our arenas, barn and animals, absolutely none of this would be possible without the countless hours that our volunteers graciously give. Neither Kent nor I take a wage from the ranch. We donate our time just like everyone else. From 5 to 85 years old, we are blessed with wonderful humans who come here and share in our vision, a kind, safe, accepting place for all. Our inclusive environment is far-reaching and spilling positively into our county and beyond. Regular visitors at the ranch come from Stettler, Castor, Concert, Drumheller, Camrose, Red Deer, Lacombe, Black Falls, Rocky Mountain House, Edmonton, Grand Prairie, Fort Mac, Calgary, Canmore, and everywhere in between. We are proud to have hosted clinics taught by national coaches and accrediting bodies, with the latest course being Equine Assisted Learning Canada. Three of us, Antoinette, Lil, and I, took the EAL training and are now certified coaches who work with individuals with anxiety, family struggles, depression, and other mental health issues. Spirits Respite Ranch is a registered nonprofit organization, and our charitable status is being applied for as we speak. Our goal is to be able to assist even more families and individuals, regardless of their abilities. All donations received go directly into programming and costs associated with events and projects. We are actively fundraising for our future goal of building a sensory room, which would be the only one in our area, our whole region. An accessible community room where aides and families alike can access supports, teach life skills and spend time together. Learn to cook or sew, work on social skills with their peers, make crafts or items that they can then sell at local markets. All of these things have such significance. One day we hope to have respite cabins built on the property that families and agencies can access instead of having to send their loved ones out of our area to cities for overnight respite care. Let's keep our families home in our county. Thank you all so much for your attention today. It means a lot to all of us to be heard by you. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Can you explain a little bit more about the sensory room that you're thinking of building? I, I can't really hear you, Dan. Oh, sorry. And that has got to be the first time. Yeah, see, also, uh, um, can you explain a little bit more, you know, about the sensory room that you're thinking of uh, building? Well, a sensory room, uh, in essence, is used for individuals who have extra sensory needs. Sometimes they are uh, a seeker, sometimes they're an avoider. Sensory rooms can help both. What we see in buildings like Aspire in Red Deer, there are sensory rooms that are available to the public that have lowered lights. There is tactile tools in there that can help a child learn to self-regulate. They can learn how to calm down. And on the other side of that, there's also some children who need 
extra input to be able to go anywhere. There's a lot of, it's a multifaceted room. Sometimes there is a, a star machine, a bubble tube, there's different heavy pressure um, tools that you can use to give your client or your loved one the deep pressure that they need to regulate to then keep going at what they're doing. My son, for example, in the arena, you'll see in some of the pictures, there's a swing hanging from the middle. He has to regulate himself by huge vestibular movements to be able to keep going with something. So he gets in that swing and he goes side to side or all the way around. And after doing that for a few minutes, it calms him down enough that then he can stay with us. And a lot of the kids that we're seeing would benefit from that. And we leave the swing up, but we would really love to be able to offer a sensory room accessible to the public for everyone in our county. Yes, Councilor Stewart. Um, I have a comment and a question. Uh, my comment is thank you very much for introducing your program to us because I, for one, didn't know a whole bunch about this. I knew it existed, but I didn't know the details of it. And I do applaud you for the work you're doing. It is wonderful. It, I can see how it helps uh, the, the children and, I guess, uh, young adults, too, that can benefit by this. And I know for me, myself, um, my animals, um, it does. It has a calming effect. If I can walk through my cows, no matter how bad my day is, I walk through my cows and I feel a whole bunch better. So I can see how this effect would help others. And I really do applaud you for the work you're doing. And I wish you well with your with your program and and to continue to grow it to help others. So congratulations and, and thank you for what you're doing for this community. And also, my question is: Do you need any kittens? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The boss. The boss says no. <laughs> Just um, uh, once again, comment and a question. Uh, thank you for coming in. We need to do a better job. At, you are one of many community champions with various programs. We need to do a better job of advertising. The community builders in our area uh there's many of you that do a wonderful job so it's great that you can come in that we can spread the word of what's available what our community is made of what what our community does when we pull together so thank you very much for doing that and my question relates to uh I will use your daughter, for example, Toba. What effect have you seen uh, by her being exposed to this? Uh, someone that, that may not need special needs and, and learning and being around and exposed to this, this sort of thing. What kind of growth have you seen from someone that, that may not require special needs being exposed to that? You know, I could speak pretty in depth as to um, how much more empathy my daughter shows in, in situations where she's had a lot more experience. Um, where I, because she's been immersed in it for the last almost seven years, Dax has been a, a high needs kid from birth. So I would love to have people like Krista Cornelson and Megan Wills be able to tell you, ask them about their kids. They volunteer with me all the time. And the growth that we see in our 4-H members that come, like those girls, we have people come and volunteer for our open houses who may have a tie to a special needs individual, may not. Sometimes we just meet people and say, come on, Smitty's really good at that. He just tells people that they have to come out. He doesn't invite them. He just tells them, come on. We are seeing people, kids and adults, say, I didn't have any experience before. And I, to be honest, wasn't comfortable about it. Didn't know what to say, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to treat them. And we are showing them that you don't have to treat them any differently at all. 
that's the place that we want to live in. That's what we want for County and Settler. We don't want people to think a few of us special needs child in County and Settler, like you just move to the city, which is, to be honest, right now, our last five years experience, we've had to go to the city for everything. We want to keep people here. Ride most ever. <laughs> And one more example we have just in the last four or five weeks a year. It's not that you're so soft spoken, but you know we can. Uh, and if anybody else is listening, uh, sorry, if, if anybody else is listening well, online, they can't hear you, please. You're on YouTube. Yeah, you're on YouTube. Okay, but just an example of in the last three or four weeks out there, we had a little girl that had basically no friends at school. Her grandparents were really quite concerned about her getting around. She's a 11 year old girl. With no special needs. Pardon? With no special needs. This is, this is just your ordinary kid going down the road every day. And I talked to her grandfather yesterday. And he shook my hand and said, I don't know what you've done to this kid, but her life has changed in the last four or five weeks out there just by, we all know who it is, but we're not going to tell you or anything. But it's that kind of a thing that's happening on a daily basis out there right now. Any other questions? Just one more quick one. I noticed in some of the pictures, it looks like some of your animals may not be getting fed properly. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're only this long, some of those horses. Um, that's Owen's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Feed them too much? Yeah. Feed them too much? Yeah. They are considerably wider than this. <laughs> Nikki, thank you. <clears throat> you were the one that opened. Oh, well, well, Janelle, I, I'm on social media and I noticed Janelle advertising an event and I relayed it to our council and you reached out to us actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and thank you, Ernie, for coming out. We had an open house at the end of August and um, Ernie came out and I think probably ended up staying a little bit longer than you thought you were going to. There was a lot to see that day. We had bouncy houses and horseback riding and, and horse-drawn wagon rides and face painting and what else is there? Just way too much fun. And we kept hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. And we all get involved. We all volunteer. Cinnamon buns. Yes. That's that's, I think, most of the reason the Points West keep coming back is the cinnamon buns. But you know, like the view that I saw this uh, fall when I was out campaigning, it was a very, I'll say, harsh, negative campaign, like to really go around. But when I come to this community and I saw, say, like the, the love that was there, and when I met this little girl, <clears throat> she'd come to me with open arms. It was unbelievable. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? You did an excellent presentation. Like you, you, yeah, like you answered a lot of questions in that presentation. That was really excellent. So, yes. I just wanted to say that what else is important for anyone that's listening is if Janelle will tell us the short amount of time that she started this ranch. So when she started till now, the amount of inclusion and everything that she's brought. Like Janelle, how long has it been that you've only been doing this? Our nonprofit has been um, in place for 13 months. But prior to that, Kent and I started it um, almost two and a half years ago. So I say if this girl can affect the lives that she's affected in 13 months, imagine what 10 years from now is going to look like. Oh, well, thank you. Is there any other questions from council? Let's... Yeah. Every council member has three hundred dollars. That is a lot to them. I make my, make my donation to this branch. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, thank you guys. Thanks everybody for coming in. I you needed you needed to wait. You needed to wait. You were right. Dude. You said you had a couple more coming. It was a lot of that's that's great couples that you brought me. You brought me a few couples. Nope. Don't start. Um, sorry. Um, Janelle sent a message out asking um for the families to write a testimonial. I'm I'm sorry. I'm Christine Morris. Um, my husband and I moved to Settler almost 20 years ago with the promise that once we had children we'd move back to Saskatchewan <laughs> and no I love Settler and I promote uh, local as much as I can scream it people ask me how do you know that person and I say how do you know it <laughs> um so unlike some of um the children that um general's been speaking about my, my children don't access special needs um, I did try writing, but every time I did, I started crying. So I just thought I'll just come, <laughs> but I couldn't be quiet. <laughs> so, um, I do have two children born here at the Stellar Hospital. Um, some of you might know that I, I work for AHS, but I do not, um, I'm not speaking for AHS right now. Speaking for myself, and I know that, um, the resources that we provide in our hospital, um, so in the midst of the COVID summer 2020 lockdowns, I noticed a shift in my children's mental state. I decided to be proactive and attempted to seek help for them to get ahead and identify any issues that had any potential to create any irreversible mental drawbacks from the pandemic and isolation. My first call was to the AHS mental health department at our own local hospital. Long story short, and lots of back and forth, <clears throat> they were unable to assess my children without any acute mental health issues and offered alternate resources. Basically, they said no, <laughs> because my children didn't have major issues. So I called the school and I knew that, I mean, it was still summer, but I knew there were some, um, they were getting ready for the school year. Um, and of course they know who I am, my husband's a teacher. Um, I was basically told that my children don't need the resources that they have. So what am I supposed to do? Um, people can knock it all they want. Facebook's a wonderful tool for me to meet others, purchase lots of stuff. <laughs> and, you know, found out about Janelle's Spirit Respite Match. Um, when we went there, you know, the few times that we've been there, but the times that we've been there, sometimes like, you know, I advertise it to the children as horseback riding lessons. And one or two times my son has just sat down and, and literally the dogs just sat on him. And, and the cat, so the cats, <laughs> just sat on him and wouldn't let him move. And I was just thinking the whole time, get on a horse. <laughs> You're supposed to be taking horseback riding lessons, but you know what, it's what he needed at the time. And, um, I'm just so grateful that you, you know, he met you and, and has access to your ranch. Um, again, not speaking for AHS, but I do receive the newsletters. I'm not sure if you have added that as part of your presentation to council. You did? I hopefully in an app and we can distribute oh, an extra for sure. article. She sure. just sent me a Well, it was an internal article, so I don't know if I'm supposed to share it or not, but <laughs> it basically showed how in Lethbridge, AHS has partnered with um, their respite ranch um, and how it's had an amazing effect to the mental health state with some of their vulnerable individuals, not necessarily children or, you know, it's just good for their community. And I know that um, when an individual goes to an organization like AHS, or a larger um, organization, it, it takes a lot of backing. Um, I know I know Janelle has the drive to promote her her um, ranch, and if you know some of you have been out there, if council would support uh, her endeavors to grow her her ranch, she like she says she doesn't take a wage. It's her giving and wonderful spirit that drives her to do this. So I think we're lucky that, that 
for individuals like Janelle and who want to promote our, our town and county. And so I just wanted to get that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's there. I just asked uh, Janelle that uh, she also come into MPC. Means that she's looking up, uh, putting up these uh, places so that uh, when the parents come and they don't have to come into town to get uh, residents, that they can be there as a family. So that's the next step I have asked for Janelle to come in uh, to approach MBC. Thank you for that, because to be honest, this is all new territory for me. I didn't know what the MPC was when he said, have you contacted the MPC? And I said, I don't think so. Apparently <laughs> uh, <early> not. <laughs> so thank you for opening up those doors. Any other questions? Larry? Yes. Larry? Yes, Councilor Grover. Yeah. Hi, I'm Councilor Grover. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this by Zoom. Uh, yeah, I know Janelle since she's a baby and uh, her husband too. Uh, they're both aggressive people and they're doing a hell of a job out there. And uh, it's nice to see that they're bringing those, uh, they're helping those kids and, and some of them, they're bringing them out of their shell so that they go more comfortable with their, with their body and stuff. But, uh, but I know her, it's gonna expand like crazy. So uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's a good deal. And we're very lucky to have young people like that in the county. Thank you. And have a good day, you know. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Is there any other questions? We've had quite a we've had quite a day. There's we've got uh, the calendar presentation this morning that shows all the beautiful pictures of our county and area, and we're we're ending the day with showing what happens to beautiful people of our county too. So, yeah, well said, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Well said. Have a good day. I'm pretty sure this isn't the last we're going to hear from you. Yeah. It sounds like no. this is just the start. Yeah, so it's just... We're a mighty bunch. Yeah. I just turned out Bowen sweater to you on our way out. And oh, I'm going to do this sweater. Oh, Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Our next meeting is Wednesday, January twelfth, two thousand and twenty-two, and we're. One other, I think that's it for the agenda. Unless anybody's got any other comments. Well, Mr. Grover will make the motion, I'm sure. Adjournment. Adjournment. Yes, yeah, you bet yes. <laughs> All right. It's not carried, Dave. I, it's not carried, Dave. I don't know what's going on. Carried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, you guys want to stay longer? All right. <laughs> All right.